some of the volunteers and staff. Good evening and welcome to the planning board's 13th meeting of fiscal year 2022 oh. for the governor's order. Um, we will be holding our meeting on Zoom tonight. Um, our agendas are on the planning board page on the town of Milton website. And um, there you can find the meeting ID and passcode. So um, before we jump into our introductions, well, actually, why don't we introduce our board members and staff, Denny Swinson Chair, Kathleen. Kathleen O'Donnell, member. Meredith. Meredith Hall, member. Cheryl. Carol Tagayas, member. Rich Beeler, Rich. Rich, Rich Beeler, secretary. And our staff, we just lost him. He's gone to another meeting, but he'll come back. Um, do we have Allison tonight or just Julia? No, I'm here. Allison Quinn, Assistant <laughs> Director of Planning and Community Development. Good evening, Allison. Good and evening. Julia. Julia Gitman clerk Excellent. Okay. Um, I wanted to do a moment of silence for Ella Wells um, of Highland Street. Um, Ella was a long-term town meeting member, a long-term director on the Milton Access Television Board. She lived forever in that Highland Street neighborhood. Um, she will be missed by so many. She's such an advocate. And um, one of my fond memories is whenever she would stand up on town meeting floor, I felt like there were a good 30, maybe 50, 80 people behind her. Just my impression, because she was uh, just so very thoughtful, very knowledgeable. And I just wanted to acknowledge uh, this loss today was her funeral. I, I know she will be missed by so many. I didn't know if anyone else wanted to say a word or two about Ella Wells. She will be missed. Yeah, she really will. Okay. All right, well, thank you everyone for that moment. Um, so, uh, tonight's agenda is about the accessory dwelling uh, unit bylaw. So anyone who would like to speak about that, just wait one moment. We'll, um, we'll probably talk as a board first, and then we'll open up to public discussion. But I didn't know if anyone was here for another topic tonight, a citizen speak um, topic other than accessory dwelling. Um, you could have a few minutes to talk about anything you wish. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands. So I thought we could um, begin our discussion about the accessory dwelling unit bylaw. So um, I wanted to recognize that um, we have, as a planning board, received um, a, a, a drafted article from Alex Whiteside, a former planning board member of Milton for 32 years. Um, and I spent some time over the weekend looking at it and I, I thought it was um, positive in, in a number of ways. I, I really appreciated the way that he worked from uh, Kathleen's version from last May and her version from this fall. And um, I really appreciated that he spent some time looking at all the varied goals um, the feedback on the article drafts that our planning board had been receiving. Um, and he came up with some additional language to provide solutions to um, many of the challenges, the goals, the requests, and the feedback that had come from our um, discussions. Um, I, I appreciated that his article you know, makes it easier to apply for an accessory unit than the existing um, bylaw that we have in effect in our town now, our existing zoning. Um, he, he wanted to make the application requirements easier and less costly without engineering assistance um, and without the need for professional design. Um, I liked that it seemed easier um, one of the things that Kathleen had been telling us over the years is that kind of like ending the ADU uh, or the existing article 
isn't as easy as it could be. And I, I thought his idea of simply removing a stove or refrigerator to decommission an accessory dwelling unit at the end um, seems easier than how the existing zoning uh, has been described to us. Um, I, I know that there's probably a sticking point in that I think um, he's advocating for a special permit. Um, and I know that uh, the article uh, that Kathleen has spent so much time on and has been working on, um, you know, various versions of over the last year um, is, is promoting as of right. Um, I, I appreciated that he explained um, that he, he feels, and I probably agree, that the special permit is helpful for the owner as well as the community where the accessory unit would be going. Um, I, I agree we want to make life easier for the homeowner that chooses to um, do an accessory dwelling unit, um, but I also think we do want to um, make it easier for the community or neighborhood where they go. Uh, if there is ever an issue, um, Alex's approach has a process to address issues um, that would involve going back to the ZBA. Um, so I, you know, so I think I just felt like there was a, a bit of a balance. Um, and I think, you know, I care about the poor people and the seniors that want to do an accessory um, dwelling unit. And then I also feel for any poor people or seniors who live next door who might want to say, well, can you move the parking space over a little bit so the, you know, the, the headlights won't, you know, come into my bedroom window. Um, so I, I just want to make it easier for both parties, the people who want to do an ADU accessory dwelling unit and the people um, receiving them in their neighborhoods. Um, so um, I just, I, I thought um, Alex's article sort of takes the best of Kathleen's hard work. Um, it makes it easier for citizens, all of them, um, and not just the ones who want to add an accessory development to their property. So um, I think it's important to remember that all income levels um, will use this. Um, I anticipate some of these additions um, going on houses and many of these separate unit updates. You know, I think we've talked about this before, but it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars for some of them. Um, and that's fine. I think um, it's it's broad intentionally, um, but I think that we have in both versions gone to some effort to try to make it, we want we, we wanted this for family members. Um, so, um, you know, the, the vast majority of our town is zoned for single family houses. So, um, if you're going to change the use of your property from single family to two family, um, with one of those units being rental, um, in a neighborhood that's currently zoned single family, uh, it's. I just think the special permit is a good idea to have a process in place to address any legitimate matters. It can't just be anything. It would have to be legitimate questions that would apply to the actual zoning language. Um, and I thought that. Alex had some really thoughtful language and a thoughtful process to address legitimate matters related to the accessory dwelling article. Um, I just thought it was spelled out really carefully. I, I know that Kathleen's been making updates to hers in, in the enforcement area, and I think that those have been improvements, and I really appreciate that. Um, so I, I just wanted to share some of my comments. I could go on and on, but I, I thought I would just, you know, um, I can, I, I'm happy to hear from other people, but I, I just wanted to, um, start the discussion, um, and, and, um, respond to somebody in the public who has spent a great deal of time, uh, um, listening to all of our meetings and, and, um, uh, you know, coming forward with, um, a lot of feedback and, and some interesting language and work. And I, I really wanted to recognize that. So um, I just thought I would um, put that out there. Is there anyone on the planning board who would like to speak on this? I've raised my hand. Oh, sure. Thank you, Kathleen. And um, 
I, while I appreciate the effort that um, Mr. Whiteside has gone to um, draft another version of the bylaw, um, we have a fundamental difference of opinion in that I believe that somebody should be able to add an accessory dwelling unit to their house internally without requiring a special permit or having um, going through a process with the Board of Appeals. Many people have talked about how simple and short those hearings are before the Board of Appeals, but they ignore the fact that it takes a long time to actually get on the calendar. It requires some effort and work on the part of the building commissioner and on the part of the homeowner to satisfy the requirements for the Board of Appeals. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and um, um, even Mr. Whiteside admits that it's not the most efficient process. Um, but as I said, I believe that somebody should have the right to put a unit in their apartment, in their house. I could right now rent out the third floor of my house um, with somebody living on the third floor and no one would know. And, um, and that happens throughout this town. Um, people forget about the fact that there are lots of houses around here that have third floors or basements that you know have been converted to um, rentals. Um, without going through anything other than putting in another bathroom and really not explaining why you're doing that. So I th while I appreciate, you know, Mr. Whiteside's efforts, my basic feeling is that the wishes of one or a few members of the public um, with respect to this issue is something that should go before the town and town meeting. And that we shouldn't be, you know, creating a zoning code that satisfies Mr. Whiteside, but doesn't satisfy other people. And I think this is more proper for a discussion at town meeting. And I'm hoping that the planning board will go ahead with the effort to sort of put this before town meeting, which is where the discussion really belongs. Um, and so I would say more about a ADUs as the questions arise from members of the public. Um, but um, I do want to state that I did, you know, I did take a look at Alex's revisions, but the fact of the matter is I do want to have by right internal ADUs allowed and not special permits for everything. He has other provisions in there that I think are more troublesome requiring that the, um, that it be a family member or some caretaker for the first time. And then after they pass on or something, you can allow another, you know, an unrelated family member. I don't see the point of that. Um, the idea that you could have a neighbor call up and have the Board of Health have to come into your house, I think is, is amazing. I, and, and I'm probably not even constitutional, um, but you know, the idea that there's sort of like local enforcement on I my mean, next door neighbor gets to call and complain and I have to let the Board of Health in. Um, though that was sort of a problem as well. The idea, I did have amnesty provisions in there for the existing units. And the real reason for that is that I'm concerned that there are these units that have been created that we don't know about. And we don't know that they're safe and that they have the right smoke detectors and they have the right you know, situation. We won't know. And this, if we don't let people uh, you know, apply to make those legal, we won't continue to know. And it's a health and safety risk to both the people living in them and to the members of the public. And uh, Mr. Whiteside's suggestion that that there shouldn't be any amnesty and those people should just be forced to, you know, be moved. I don't know where, since we don't really have very many housing options in this town for renters, um, is, is, uh, I, I, is a hardship I, his... I don't think is right. So anyway, I just, as I said, I'm prepared to answer more questions that come from members of the public. Um, but I did want to say that, you know, uh, my fundamental disagreement with Alex cannot be resolved by his revisions to this latest version. Thank you. Could I clarify, when you um, are talking about um, as of right, and you said internally, um, did you mean an addition or if it, or if the footprint didn't change? Did if you can, I mean, basically the additional, the idea is that it's an internal unit and you're probably not making any changes to the exterior, but if you were adding an addition and you can apply with zoning, it, it satisfies the setbacks, satisfies zoning in that district, 
um, and that you don't you 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 present your plans to the to the building commissioner, and he says, "Yep, you're good to go." Then you're good to go. So it's as of right for all options, even like a coach house or well, know, coach house is a separate you know is a separate dwelling is a separate okay. building. Okay, detached. So is that it has to be detached? Of right the now, the situation with these temporary apartments is that you have to not only apply for the temporary apartment, but if you're doing the construction at the same time, you have to get a variance. We don't allow you to put a temporary unit in new construction. It has to be in the existing house. So everybody goes to the ZBA and asks for a variance and for the permit for the for the three years of the temporary park. So, so this I think I think just to just to clarify what I think Denny's question is, is that the, the current draft is if it's if it's attached to the existing structure, it's as of right. If it's an if it's an an, an, an attached outbuilding carriage house, garage, et cetera, it's a special permit at the Board of Appeals. Correct. Okay. 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 All right. So there is a special permit for the detached. Okay. Absolutely. But, but internally, um, if you change the footprint or you do an addition, it's as of right. If you, yes, if you only if you if you comply with zoning and your addition is all in, in compliance with zoning, yes, it's as of right. Okay. Um, you need a variance. I, you're going to have to talk to somebody about that. Okay. I I would like to hear from Alex a little bit later, but I think his point about amnesty provisions would be that they would um, that if somebody has an illegal apartment now, they would get in line. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be. Um, they wouldn't necessarily just be pushed along. They would have to sort of get in line. Um, you know, it'd be like a first come, first serve, and 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 you know, somebody who currently has it would have to get in line. Um, and then um, the family member, um, it, it, he he has the special permit model. So what he said is the family member. Um, requirement could be waived. They just have to have a reason. So if you have, a, you know, a, you know, a woman in the house and she's widowed and she's lost her husband and she'd like to rent out, you know, a part of her house, um, she could go to the ZBA and say, you know, this is, a, you know, I have financial reasons. I want to keep my house. I would like to, you know, have a non-family member rent it. Um, and I don't think that they even have to have a sad story like that. I think they could just say, I, you know, I, I, I need, I, I, I need this, you know, to work. And I, I think that that would be reason. I mean, I think it's written so it would be easy. That was my read of it. But um, you still have to go to the ZBA. That's not easy. Right. right. I, I, well, I think, I think we can, you know, I, we can all. I just said, I, Basic disagreement on that. So okay. yes, That's with all due respect. Okay, thank you. Respect taken. Um, okay, I, I noticed that we have Meredith's hand up and then we'll go to Cheryl next. They both had their hands up for a little while. So interested to hear from you, Meredith. Right, I'm unmuted, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so thank you. And I just wanted to say, just Kathleen, thank you for all the work that you have put into this. Um, I have been, I really spent a lot of time with both yours and with Alex's version because both have been making changes along the way. And I really have been looking very deeply because I was expecting us to be able to have more of a conversation um, at earlier meetings that we just did not have time for. So um, unfortunately we are, we are down to the wire on, on getting this, if we we're gonna put this forward with getting something, with publicizing a public hearing to make it available for putting it on town meeting and getting it to the select board. So we don't have a lot of time to be, you know, if we could be going back and sort of ironing out things, but we really, I think we're looking at two drafts here um, that are, like you said, Kathy, I, I think are, are good, but they're very different. And uh, I just want to go through some of my concerns and uh, Kathleen, I, I do thank you again, but um, some of the things that I, I do feel strongly is that uh, I, I want to say there should be one gatekeeper. I don't think it should be the ZBA does certain accessory dwelling units and the and the building department does others. I think there should be one sort of a, a gateway to um, 
a sort of a gatekeeper of all of our ADUs and the, and the process is the same for whatever ADU. I really believe that the way Milton is, I think we are respectful of our neighbors and in in that light, I think to change to change the use of a single family dwelling, it would be disrespectful to not give notice to your neighbors and not notice to the public. And part of that process, and there is a process, and there's a reason why there is a process, is neighbors, there may be things that the neighbors know that the building department wouldn't know. And when you have the neighborhood involved, I think you end up with a better outcome. It's not a privacy issue. It's not, you know, they don't have to say who, who it is, but it's that they are doing this. It's all, it's really, it's not about who's being going to be the renter. It's more to me on it's a change of use of the of a single family dwelling and somebody who buys a house in a single family neighborhood, that's what they just expect it to be a single family neighborhood. And if it is changing, that's okay, but we need to, there needs to be a process, um, I think in, in letting the public know. Um, second of all, Kathleen, the, one, of the, one of the concerns that I have is the, um, is I really feel like there should be a cap of 10, um, a limit of 10 new ADUs. Um, I think this would require allowing for at least a couple of years to continue to have the temporary apartment because we don't want people to lose that status of being able to have a temporary apartment within their home if they already have one. But limiting it to 10, um, including the temporary apartments, they would. I, I envision them going through the same application process um, that they can, you know, that they can um, apply. Um, and this will allow over time for the temporary apartments to transition into the ADUs. Mm -hmm. And it also then would allow illegal people, to, the illegal um, apartment people to come forth and also get in line and say, we'd like to apply. We would like this to be um, considered an ADU unit and not have difficulty. But the reason why I really think limiting it to 10 is basically we have no idea how many temporary apartments and how many um, unknown uh, apartments that that we that exist right now. So creating amnesty and saying, well, all of those can just simply become ADUs, first of all, I think would be overly burdensome to our building, our, our building commissioner. Um, he would be, you know, having to go through, go inspect all of those units. I, I think we need to be careful about our staff. And I think having 10 um, is, is very reasonable for him to over to oversee. Um, I would also, um, the, for detached um, accessory units, um, I think one thing that I liked that Alex had was there's a proper, the zoning setback would be for a single family dwelling. I think setbacks are, are critical. Um, and again, that would that would be something the, the ZBA is very familiar with looking at those setbacks. Um, and, and I think that would be great. And then the one thing that Alex actually took out, which I, I, I'm concerned with the building department being responsible for the enforcement of owner occupancy. I just don't even know how that would be possible for them to down the road be enforcing and making sure it's owner occupant owner occupied unless a neighbor were to say, you know what, I haven't seen that, I haven't seen that person. And that requires them to complain. I did like that Alex had um, that an affidavit would be provided. Um, every three to four years, you know, it could be three years, four years, but but there periodically is an affidavit stating that um, that the owner is is occupying the the unit and that it's just not a two family and it's not become an investment property, um, which could I think happen quite easily. So um, for those reasons, I would be very comfortable in feeling confident that we could put something together on town meeting floor that would not be shot down. I think this is a very, it's its much more lenient than our temporary um, apartment bylaw. And I think it's something that, I, I think our town does see a need, but I think we should really, um, this is complicated. I've, I've had a career in property management and having tenants, it, it does, it's its not simple. There's lead paint laws, there's all, there's all kinds of things that, that owners might not know about when they're renting properties. And so starting with a family member and easing into 
renting, I, I think I think does make sense. And if there's a reason why it doesn't, it shouldn't be a family member, it can be that can be waived. Um, I think that's permissible. So I would feel comfortable um, endorsing Alex's um, article that to put forth. Thank you. Thank you, Meredith. We'll have more opportunity to speak um, later, but thank you for giving us a sense of your thinking. Okay, so Cheryl, you had your hand up next. Yes, thank you. Um, I spoke um, previous at a previous meeting uh, citing a number of things from ARP, which is, um, as we all know, for the um, those of us over 50, when we start getting the mailings from them. But um, um, Which I did not like to catch. <laughs> So I won't repeat myself with those comments, but I do think they were important um, comments. And the, the uh, guidance from ARP, I think, is important if anyone um, is interested in reading it. Um, I also think Melinda spoke uh, eloquently as to the need when she spoke before. Um, I served on the um, housing committee uh, along with Rich um, and Kathleen when the housing production plan was drafted. And um, on the planning board, when we adopted that um, last year, um, this topic had been batted around as long as I've been on the planning board, I think. Um, and I really think I agree with um, Kathleen. There's like there's a fundamental difference of opinion about whether this uh, these should be as of right or require a special permit, and whether uh, family member restrictions should be there or not. And I feel as if the five of us don't represent necessarily all of the collective thought that the legislative body of the town meeting would represent. Um, each town meeting member is elected um, in their precinct to speak for their precinct. And I really feel as if this is a debate that should go to town meeting. And, you know, the thought is if town meeting has, um, you know, decides one way or another that the the um, the article can be sent back to us for some further uh, study and some further work and be perhaps ready for uh, a spring town meeting or a, a town meeting following that. But I, I really think that a lot of times town meeting members don't know much about the zoning we're working on until they receive their warrants or they get some indication in the newspaper. Um, and, you know, I think if we uh, if we think that we've got all of the opinion um, provided to us thus far that that might be out there, I think we would be mistaken. So um, I, I guess my feeling is that we may just make it a little bit cleaner and a little bit um, less restrictive yes. if you do the tinkering, what I might call the tinkering with the existing. But I think this debate about taking away the requirement to have to go to the Board of Appeals for any one of okay. these is an important debate. Um, it, um, you know, when we think about our current zoning, uh, we don't restrict or control or inspect who's living in a home. The zoning doesn't say that you can't rent out your home to a large family or a small family, a family that includes uh, extended family. Um, your neighbors don't get to know who's living in your house and don't get to inspect who's in your basement or in your attic. And your neighbors don't get to have a say if an addition or a change to your home um, bothers them as long as it's zoning compliance. And, um, you know, our building department, our, our building commissioner is our zoning compliance officer. Uh, I think um, he looks at plans now and decides if they meet zoning or if they don't. And if they don't, then he right. issues a rejection letter. And then those folks would have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeal. So we already have a two gatekeeper in a way to use the term, uh, I think that Meredith used, process, you know, because of the way zoning works. So I'm not really worried about that kind of two um, gatekeeper kind of process. And when we put things sort of at the, you know, one of the things we heard from our building commissioner, he likes things to be less discretionary, if you will. So the more that we put as discretionary, so if the Board of Appeal gets to decide whether there's a waiver for a family member requirement, what are the parameters that they use to make that determination? Is it how a neighbor in one neighborhood feels versus a neighbor in another neighborhood? You know, is it that, um, you know, someone on that particular 
uh, street views their neighborhood differently than another neighborhood. Um, so I, I think that that concerns me that there's no parameters for that. Um, so those are my comments for now. I. I I really um, thank both uh, Kathleen and Alex for their work on this and everyone's uh, thoughtfulness. And one last thing I'd like to request, Denny, is if we could hear from staff on this before we hear from the public. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I, um, I I don't see Rich's hand up yet, so I'll, I'll jump in and, and Rich, you can go next if you'd like, or you might like to go to the public after the staff. It's up to you. But I, I just wanted to um, actually kind of agree with um, Meredith that I, I too would like to endorse Alex, Alex's article. Um, you know, I, I do feel that people across the town are bought into single family neighborhoods by and large. Um, and I, I do feel that we need to be sensitive um, to that. Um, and, and make this process the best that it can be and, um, you know, let people know when there's going to be a change of use, um, which, which isn't just a two family, it's, it's a part rental. And I do know that people can rent their houses now. Um, it, it doesn't happen that much because of the economics of it right now. People don't generally rent their house because the, you know, the, the mortgage doesn't make it worth it. So, but I, I did want to note that on Alex's plan, you know, if there were something that was non-compliant about the house um, that had an application, you know, prior to approval, um, there there is a way through the special permit to get that up to up to snuff. Um, you know, if it's a board of health issue, or you know, sometimes we've had I've I've gotten this, but. but People tell me things like this just because I'm on the planning board. I can't really do much about it. But people will say, you know, this guy has had a boat parked in his front yard for 30 years. Is there anything you can do? And I really can't, but you can go to the building inspector. But this this would allow the building inspector an incent uh, to, to provide that homeowner with an incentive. You can get something good. You can get an ADU, but you just need to, you know, deal with the boat or whatever it is to get your house into legal compliance. It's technically not legally compliant to have a boat in your front yard for 30 years, but a lot of times our building inspector doesn't go after those issues because it would mean that our building inspector would be in court all day and he needs to be in the office, you know, doing all of his um, his work and, and, and going to all the sites in town. So um, anyway, um, so the other um, Alex's version, you know, allows for that to be addressed prior to permitting. Um, and if something were to go wrong or fall out of compliance after an ADU, an, an accessory dwelling unit has been permitted, you know, in five or 10 years down the road, you know, if somebody were running an Airbnb or if it was no longer owner occupied, there's language in Alex's um special permit that, that you would go back to, um, it's a process, it's a ZBA process to take away the permit of a accessory dwelling unit that's not in compliance. Um, and I would like to see those things enforced because I would rather that permit go to somebody who wants an accessory dwelling unit that's going to be in compliance. Um, and it, the, the, it's, so it's two parts. So if you have a special permit, then the um, enforcement can refer to that special permit and go back to the ZBA for help with enforcing the permit. And there's specific language on that. Now, if you don't have a special permit, it's, it's, it's the, the building inspector has to go to court and there's filing fees and legal fees and you know, time with our town council, and that that all goes to the tax base. So, um, so I do want to make it easier to have an accessory dwelling unit, um, and, but then I, I also want to make it as easy as it can be for the neighborhood and for the town departments and so forth. Um, and I also care about providing our enforcement officer clear language to enforce in a less costly way. Um, than taking citizens to court. Um, and so um, 
so um, I, I think I think that that encourages enforcement when in the process to enforce is easier and doesn't cost as much money. I think you have a better chance of actually having better enforcement. Um, I also like the design guidelines in Alex's article. Um, I just, um, you know, especially with separate structures um, and um, so I'll, I, I have lots, I could go for it, Arbor, but I'll just, um, I'll just open it up to Rich or Rich, did you want to go to the public or and we'll hear from? You can, um, no, you can go to the public. Okay. All right. I, I know. Can Tim, we do Tim first though? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tim. Are you ready, Tim? Yeah. Um, I and 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 I have I have. Can you guys hear me? I yes. I'm kind of on two meetings right now, but if something drastic happens at the ZBA, um, I'm gonna get a text. I don't think it will. Be. It won't. Um, so I, I I do I do have a lot of thoughts on this, and 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 I suspect I I I may want to based on what we hear from the public because I think um it's important to kind of um. You know, respond to some of those comments in real time. Um, just a couple kind of quick things. Um, the the fundamental question that I think the board needs to wrestle with, and I think this is, you know, Kathleen kind of touched on this a bit when, when she talked about kind of the, the the fundamental philosophical difference between um, her draft and and the uh, the citizen draft that we got, is if if you have a set of requirements that are based in our zoning that we've had for almost 100 years um, in terms of dimensional requirements, setbacks, height, building coverage, screening, uh, percentage of your front setback that can be paved, if all of those requirements are, are the same for an ADU, then, then what is it that a discretionary process is meant to accomplish? And, and what are the you know if you if you've got all of those requirements and a, and 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 a project kind of checks all those boxes what is the zba ruling on in those cases um you know it, it's it's just a fundamental question of, of of what are you trying to accomplish with with a special permit process because i think one thing that we know from from experience in the town of milton in in, in every town across the commonwealth in every city and town across the country that has some form of zoning is that um, a, a by right process yields an easier process than, than a discretionary process, whether it's a special permit or some sort of public hearing. Um, it just is. Um, you know, there's there's no public hearing. There's no need for outside professionals or lawyers. Um, the time is more predictable. Um, you have, you know, a, a clock that runs when you submit a building permit application in a way that if there's a discretionary process, you could have a public hearing that could go session upon session upon session. So the, 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 this, utilizing the special permit process, you really need to be deliberate about doing that because what you're essentially saying is the trade-off here is we're going to make it more difficult, but the, 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 the outcome that we get is going to be better. Um, and so you really need to wrestle with that trade-off as to what is being accomplished by having a special permit process with a public hearing. Um, I, th I think the other thing, and, and again, I, 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 don't, I, I can't speak for Joe, but I, but I think I can kind of speak to, to the conversation that we've had um, in terms of if you gave the building commissioner a preference, um, you know, <laughs> And, and I, I, I use the example of construction start times. Uh, we have regulations about when construction activities can happen in the town of Milton. Um, if you're you know, paving your driveway or doing work on the outside of your house. Um, I don't know them off the top of my head, but it's you know, something a.m. on the weekdays, something a.m. to something p.m. on Saturdays, and then Sundays. And that's across the town for every construction activity. Um, frequently when you get a special permit or a subdivision approval or a site plan approval or, or some other type of discretionary approval from the planning board or the board of appeals, um, there's, there's a tendency to, to make those construction start times a little bit tighter as a way of mitigating the impact of, of construction. And what you've got there is a situation where now there's one set of standards for the majority of projects, and then there's another standard for this one project and another standard for this one project and another standard for this one project. And this is where you get issues with the ability to enforce things is when you're taking the building commissioner out of 
the lane that he is very accustomed to being in, in terms of he knows the zoning inside and out, um, he enforces it every day. Um, when you go outside of that or do something different, um, that's when that's when you run into kind of difficulties in, in enforcement. And so, you know, the prospect of having, you know, up to 10 different special permits, which is not to say that the Board of Appeals would do it 10 different ways, 10 different times, um, but there is the potential for that to happen. Um, and so that just creates, and, and, you know, construction start time is just one example. You know, if you've got something about setbacks, or you've got something about materials, or you've got something about screening, um, you know, because this is what the purpose of a discretionary process is, is to look at the individual, you know, conditions of a piece of land and a project and, and cater requirements to those specific um, circumstances, which is attractive in, in certain ways. I think you want to do that for the big major projects we've been talking about zoning for a memory care facility, which would be kind of uniquely impactful. Um, you know, for a particular neighborhood and that there's no question that that needs to be a special process. I think, again, to get back to that fundamental question of what the board needs to wrestle with is, you know, there's a line and on one side is by right and on the other side is special permit. And to, to have that line be so far in the direction of, you know, one extra dwelling unit in an accessory fashion on a parcel and then everything on the other side of that is a special permit, it's really going to limit the towns and the planning board's ability to, to affect change through land use regulation. Um, the, um, I'm trying to think, I, 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 had, I, had, I had notes that I left downstairs, um, so I'm going to let my train of thought run for just a minute more, um, and then I'll, I'll let you get to the to the public. But I think, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, you know, what, what's on the table here is it's pegged to the physical zoning requirements that we have that affect, you know, every other project in town. Um, you know, and, and that's what zoning is about. It's about. Um, and so we've got, you know, side and rear setbacks to protect abutting properties from having too much height and bulk right on the property line. Um, we've got building coverage requirements to protect, you know, the land from having too much impervious surface. We've got screening requirements to protect everybody from having to look at a huge parking lot, you know, in someone's front yard. And so, you know, I, I think if it's good enough for everything else, what makes it not good enough for, for, for this thing? Um, so that, that's kind of what I've got for now. I know Allison and I have talked about this um, a great deal, um, almost every day in the office for the past few weeks. So um, I, I did want to give her, if, if, if you'll indulge, um, a chance to, to make any comments. About it. Sure. Hi, Allison. Hey, Jenny. Um, thanks, Tim. I think Tim and I are, in the, are on the same page with, uh, you know, how we're perceiving um, the the zoning draft for the for the article. Uh, another thing uh, that, I, that might be worth mentioning is that I staff uh, the the housing the select board housing committee. I sat I staff the uh, trustees of the affordable housing trust um, and MPIC and community preservation committee and the landing committee. But uh, in particular, those those two uh, first mentioned committees and. Uh, the accessory dwelling unit has been something that's been on the radar in in those committees for for quite some time um, because they allow the opportunity for what's referred to as a a soft like little a naturally occurring affordability um, and I think that that's important because it's been highlighted in the housing production plan um, several of them now it, it's it's a commitment that we've made or you know, you know, those boards and committees have, have made to uh, to forward to try and offer some some relief to folks that that live in Milton. And I, I think, you know, to merit this point that people, you know, they're buying into a, a, a single family neighborhood. Um, and that's that's true. Um, Milton doesn't have any other zoning, but single family. Um, so I, I think that, you know, looking at the accessory dwelling unit um, as, a, as a way to create that, that soft, you know, little a natural affording, natural 
uh, occurring affordability is, is a great way to think about um, almost like a baby step in, in the direction of having of Milton have control over the types of land use that it wants. It's not really a, a change of use because it's still a, a residential use, but it is a, a change of occupancy. So, so, you know, I can understand why, um, you know, people get concerned about, you know, how many people are living where and who's living there. But I think, you know, to Tim's point, um, you know, it is this fundamental difference of, you know, is this going to lie with, um, you know, Joe Prondack to regulate, and he's assured us that he can. He looked at the draft. He gave us feedback. Um, and if and if that's not the option that folks want to go with, they want to go with a special permit. Um, you know, there are difficulties in enforcing that when the conditions are so specific to a site. Um, and I that's really all I have. That's just the feedback I have for you. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Of course. And I just have one other thing just to add to, <clears throat> yeah. again, because I just, watching um, watching a temporary apartment being approved recently at a ZBA meeting, um, one of the things when I'm talking about streamlining, having a, having a set process for what people go through, the Zoning Board of Appeals is actually able to do other things as well as approve the temporary apartment or the ADU. They actually gave, it was an addition. It was somebody wanting to put a temporary apartment in. And rather than having them come back again and go through a variance, because they needed, they also needed two variances, they were able to approve everything at once. So if somebody was going to do an ADU and they wanted to do an addition, but they needed some variances, which is very common in Milton because of our our uh, non-conforming pre-existing, um, pre-existing non-conforming homes that they were able to do it all in one process. So going through the ZBA, they got the temporary apartment approved plus two variances, and it was within 15 minutes. So that just, it was another reason why, and whether there's conditions, they could also, you know, impose conditions, which I don't think the the uh, building commissioner would be able to do. Well, Meredith, just ex I, I was on the ZBA and I sat on those. Just yeah. because the hearings themselves only take 15 minutes, doesn't cover the fact that it's a lot of work to get to those 15 minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's not, a, it's not, you know, a slam dunk, you know, to all the work that has to be done to get it on the agenda. Um, and as I said, I talked to the building commissioner about it and he said the same thing. It's, it's not, yeah, the hearing itself may be perfectly wonderful, but you know, it's a lot of work to get there. Um, and a lot of work on the part of the staff. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I do want to recognize that, you know, Kathleen has, has worked really hard and she has, you know, provided, you know, many drafts over this past year. And we have discussed this and boards in the past have discussed this before us. Um, I am, I, I, when I was reading Alex's language over the weekend, I, I finally felt like, yeah, I could get there, you know, like this, I, I felt like incorporating Kathleen's versions in and, and maybe some more tweaks, I don't know, but I just felt like, you know, we we could get to broad consensus possibly. I, I do understand there is a philosophical issue that we're still grappling with, um, but I, I do want to appreciate that Cheryl had mentioned um, that she feels that this should be debated on town meeting floor. And I thought possibly, I just want to put this out here before we listen to the public. I thought possibly we could, as a planning board, accept Alex's article as well as um, Kathleen's article for the purpose of our um, public hearing in two weeks and two days, I think. It's two weeks from Thursday. Um, and I, I just wanted to toss that out there as a possibility um, to have a rigorous and healthy debate um, because we do seem to have, you know, a, a half the board one way, half the board the other way. You know, I think some of us see the value in a special permit. Some, some others feel differently and feel the value is in um, the um, as of right. So um, just an idea I wanted to put out there. Um, 
happy to let that sit. And I wanted to hear from Rich Beeler and then we could open it to the public. Okay. Thanks. Actually, <clears throat> I think I answered my first question. Um, <laughs> and I, so let me, I'm going to say it anyway, because I'm looking at two computers, just flipping through it. Um, I think it's in, Kathleen, it's yours, in E, number three, it says only one accessory dwelling unit um, may be created within a single family home or house lot. So that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think, my, <laughs> I'm going to, it's a stupid question because I think I just read it, but that just plainly means you can only do one ADU per lot, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we, <clears throat> it's funny, I was, I've been doing a lot of like Google searching on other towns because obviously there are a lot of towns putting these forward, right? And I'm seeing a lot of by rights by towns. like All of them on the Cape, yeah. Yeah, I'm specifically looking at, and I don't think it's been approved yet, but I, I like Lexington seems to have this really nice proposal layout on their their main page of the ADUs that shows like, sorry, Alexa's listening to me in the oh. background. <laughs> it's, it's Google searching Lexington now. Sorry, Alexa, stop. <laughs> I thought it was Lexington talking to oh. you. Oh my God, this is like, it just went on and on and on telling me all about the highlights. Um, that was crazy. But no, they did a great job with kind of laying out a PDF. Anyway, um, one of the things on there I thought was interesting, they had in there um, a rec like a max to adults and any children. Um, so they were kind of putting some restrictions on, it seemed to me that they were trying to put restrictions on how big it could get. Or I, I think they also had a restriction on 800 square feet. Um, if I'm not, if I remember correctly. And then there was another one that I thought was interesting. They were going the route of no additional parking is required. And I'm not sure I understood what they meant by that. Meaning you can't put any more parking. So like you get what you get and you can't grow it. Or if you just, you don't need to add any just because you're putting one in. Yeah, that was um, um, Arlington and the AARP did a session on ADUs, which I signed on to watch. And they had the um, person, the proponent from Arlington, and they took out a parking requirement because they felt um, that it was discriminatory to require parking um, was, um, you know, was a detriment. And so they decided that they weren't going to require you to install parking um yep. and and it was a it was like a, a you know fair housing kind of idea that they didn't want to have that as a requirement but yeah yeah and i know I, i'll probably folks might not like me for this but i kind of like what you just said there because like the reality is if you're going to again this is one option right but if you're going to have it within your existing property you've redone your basement whatever you've you've redone your third floor or whatever and i've got you know one spot i mean i don't know how many people have one spot available but if you own let's say you only have room in your driveway for one car it's yours and somebody's moving in that doesn't need a car i'm not sure that it, i mean is it right for us to say you must create one it sounds odd to me to force mm -hmm. a, park, a pay parking space when you may not need a parking space. And now you're just going to make some paved road, just paved, yeah. paved surface, just because we have a bylaw that says you have to. I don't know if you have thoughts or anybody has thoughts on that, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I sort of looked at a whole bunch of versions of ADUs and, and the sort of that feeds into the general discussion we've been having on yeah. all the other applications that we've been looking at about parking and what the parking requirements ought to be. Um, I don't know whether Arlington allows parking on the street at night, uh -huh. um, but we don't. So I thought, well, I don't know, you probably ought to leave that in. Um, you know, just to a certain extent, it sort of, I suppose, helps to kind of discourage the number of units if you have to provide parking and that sort of thing. I'm going back to Meredith's point about 10, you know, putting a cap on the 10 and saying, okay, a temporary apartment and uh, an illegal one would all count for the 10. I, you know, I'd be willing to do that because I don't think we're going to get that many of these. I don't know why people think they're getting thousands of them. 
I mean, that would be a change I'd be willing to, yeah, I'd be willing to consider subject to the other board members' thoughts. Um, uh, cause I think, you know, I, as I said, I don't think there's that many of them and I don't think that's a problem, but, um, but the parking thing, yeah, Rich, you know, I, you think about our neighborhood, you know, our driveways are really, lots of them are only one car wide now. And, I, you know, yeah. I mean, if I rented out, if I fixed up my third floor and had, had somebody live there, I mean, I've got space with, you know, three cars on my one strip, but we'd be playing, you know, guacamole trying to move the cars around all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I do that with my kids now. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, no, I, yeah, and I get it. And I've, yeah, I, I just, I'm one of those, like, I do like the idea of really considering, like, especially in large developments, the parking. However, you know, just within the line of work that I'm in with sustainability and things like that, yeah. I mean, I see it across, across the country, right? Things are changing and people are building buildings or units. And they have either no or very little parking, and it's for a reason, right? We, I mean, that's kind of the way we're going. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's an opportunity at some point to say, you know, instead of you have, you know, required to build it, perhaps there's an opportunity, right, for some way to get, you know, a waiver, right? Like, hey, I only got one spot, but I, I'm going to be, I don't know. Yeah, Something to think yeah, about I mean, for the future. That, that could be a possibility. I mean, if, if you did a special permit and you were before the ZBA and you were right next to, you know, you were near uh, the train or the bus and, you know, you could demonstrate you don't have a car and you're not going to use them, you don't need a spot, then that would be a great waiver, I think. There would be great, that would be great to have something in there to sort of say, you know, with just, with some discretion. Um but Rich, if you don't have any more comments, I wanted to open up to the public. We have a few hands sure. raised. <clears throat> sure. Okay. Are, are you good? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can wait till after. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, all right. Um, Mr. Whiteset. Alex. Alex has had his hand up for a while. I don't Hi. know if you Oh, hello. Good evening. Hello. Uh <laughs> I, I, just initially. Oh, do you want to give us your street address and tell oh, me? My name is Alexander Whiteside, and I <laughs> live on Hillside Street, and I have a number of outbuildings on my property, and I'm not a, uh, I'm not planning to do anything residential with them, but uh, Milton is zoned for single families. And we make some exceptions. And when you create two units on a lot, we're doing an exception to the single family zoning. And if we said, well, everyone should have an accessory apartment, we could create two family zoning. Um, as principal dwelling and an accessory dwelling unit. And then we'd have uh, two family zoning and uh, uh, the accessory apartment wouldn't be an exception. It would be the rule. Uh, but that's not the case. And I don't think that most people who live in Milton want to become a multifamily residential town. They want to stay a single family town. However, there are reasons to have an additional apartment on a lot under specified conditions. And uh, uh, we have zoning, which is a uh, uh, single family zoning with a temporary uh, apartment. And, and the two plans, the master plan, the housing production plan, said these plans are a little clunky. You should amend them to make them make them more user friendly. And I have and and what we have now is uh, a special permit process because we're dealing with an exception and this and the zoning board of appeals makes exceptions. That's how the process works. You don't zoned by, you don't zone exceptions by right. They're, 
they're by permit. They're, that, that's just the way they are. Um, so uh, I uh, uh, I talked to uh, uh, the, the current process we have for temporary apartments is a special permit process. And I talked to the chairman of the Board of Appeals and he thought that the special part permit process is a valuable process and it should be retained. And I asked him about the time it took and he indicated that he didn't think that the time was undue or that the cost was undue. And that when there was a real need, the, the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals would advance a matter for expedited consideration. It's, it's the Board of Appeals is a good board and they do a good job and they, they're, they're very flexible. They, 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 they work well. And when they create an exception, they take all the circumstances into account and they craft a solution which uh, meets legitimate objections. But you can't craft a solution if you don't know what the objections are. And that's the problem with as of right zoning. You go to the building inspector, you ask for a permit, you don't talk to your neighbors, they never have a right to, to issue their concerns to anyone. You just go to the building inspector, you get your permit and you install whatever it is that you're allowed to install. And, you know, in Milton, we have a history of civility. And civility requires that you don't do things. You don't create exceptions to the zoning without telling anyone and without giving the people who may be affected the right to... Uh, the right to be heard and the right to voice their concerns and objections. And maybe they won't have any, but at least they've been told. And when you have to tell someone, you often do it in a nice way by going to your neighbor and saying, I'm thinking about adding a unit for whatever purpose you, you want to add the unit. And you say, what do you think? And, uh, um, Often and usually, when you get to the uh, Board of Appeals, it sails through because you've been civil. And it's not civil to do it in secret. It just isn't. The Board of Appeals process is very important. And not as only is it important because it gives notice and hearing and the opportunity for interested and affected people to be heard, but it also provides the Board of Appeals the opportunity to issue conditions. And it isn't, not every case is the same. And, and, and you mentioned this, that they, there might be 10 different special permits if you had a special permit process. And that's right, you might, because Every situation is different. And the Board of Appeals may have to deal with the situations differently in order to arrive at a good result. That's the way the process works. And if you do it as a right, there's no process. There's no process, there's no enforcement to speak of. I mean, you've, you've, got, you've got zoning sitting there and, uh, uh, but, uh, what you're supposed to do isn't written anywhere. And uh, uh, it's not, a, uh, it, I mean, it's what we have with a single family house. You have a single family house, there is not much enforcement that goes on with it. Uh, and that's because you can do it as of right. Uh, and when you do something that can be seen and it violates the zoning, the building inspector will enforce it. But if everything is within four walls, uh, um, it's pretty hard to enforce it. Um, the, 
Thank, thank you, Alex. So just to just to quickly summarize, one of your points is that um, Mr. Leonard um, said that these can get on the docket, even though we have a lot of 40 Bs going on. I, I mean, I think it would take a long time for the Attorney General and everything to approve our accessory dwelling unit article. It'll probably be a year from now before that actually start happening. Um, really? If, if everything went, well, maybe nine months, I don't know, six, six months, nine months for, a, for the AG, and then whatever, three months to get it up and running. I'm thinking, I could be wrong, but um, anyway, we, we might be in a different position than we are right now with the ZBA and the 40Bs. Um, but did, um, did, did he say he could fit those kind of things in on a, on a schedule? Well, he indicated that he, uh, uh, they kept Mondays open for non 40B projects. And obviously at some point these 40B hearings are going to end. <laughs> I hope so. Gosh, do I'm I hope sure so. they're hoping the same. Oh my goodness. But in any event, he, he does say that the Board of Appeals attempt it, or keeps Mondays open for hearings like this or variances and other special permits because the board knows that uh, people have needs and uh, uh, it's a responsive board. It's a good board. Um, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't dispense with its services because they're, they're needed. Uh, Alex, can I, can I pause you? Briefly, only because we've had people with their hands up for a while. Could I you, invite you, you back you, in a little you, while? You may indeed pause me. I will. Okay. Mute, I will mute myself. Okay. Well, I very much appreciate that because I I noticed that um, we have someone. I think it's their name is S Rios. Um, yeah, right hi. Here. My my name is Simone Rios. Oh, good evening, Mr. Rios. Could you tell us your street address? Sure. It's nine eighty eight Hillside Street. Thank you, Mr. Rios. Thank you for coming tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, so I have some comments here I'd just like to read, tell uh, my own personal story, and talk about how I support this, this uh, change to an access accessory dwelling unit by right. Um, so we bought the house here about three years ago. I'm a reporter at, at WBUR. Um, and the reason we we bought this property was because it had a barn uh, just steps away from the house. And it was a chance for me to have my mother as my next door neighbor. And really, the purchase would not have been possible without going in on this together. Um, so the plan was to sell her house uh, in Nashua um, and then use the proceeds from that to convert this old horse barn into, into her retirement home, her and, and her partner. Uh, before finalizing the purchase and sale agreement, we agreed to a condition with the sellers that we would need written confirmation that, that our plans would be permitted, and, and the sale was contingent on this. Miraculously, the seller agreed to that. Um, fortunately, oh. <laughs> we, we hired the, the right lawyer who was able to really you know, dig through past zoning disputes and legal precedents in Milton and determined that our plans should be permitted as of right. But here's the funny part. We had to cite the bylaw that referred to a caretaker's unit, meaning my mother would be considered domestic help if we were to build. So she, she wasn't crazy about that, but <laughs> she went along with it. Um, so, you know, this is obviously an arcane definition designed for live-in stable hands rather than someone's 70 something parents. And it, it's a need of, a, of an update. Um, but we made it happen, uh, and we built a really magnificent place for mom, you know, using the latest green building techniques. And I'm, I live in the house. Sounds kind of bad that my mom lives in the horse barn, but believe me, it's a lot nicer. Um, I want to say, as a reporter who focuses on housing, um, I'm deeply aware of, of the state's housing shortage and how it affects us on many levels, locally and on a state wide basis. Um, and, and I'm thrilled that, that my community, this is the, my first time testifying at uh, a public meeting in, in Milton, and I'm thrilled that uh, the planning board is doing its part to, to address the housing shortage, which I think this does. Um, one trend that I've noticed over the years is multi-generational households pooling their 
resources to purchase property that would not be affordable to them individually. Um, I think this is an excellent model, both for the families who, who benefit, uh, like for to have children uh, close, close to their grandparents, and for the communities that are enriched by these multi-generational households. One testament to this is, is my mom, Ellen Barr, uh, who's become a volunteer with Friends of the Blue Hills and is increasingly active in the church where she's a, a new member. So I really think Milton should be doing everything it can to support this kind of development. Um, although the bylaws did work in our case with the help of a good lawyer, um, they have left us in a sort of precarious situation. So if we ever decide to sell the house, we can't list it as an ABU or even as a caretaker unit because that is that would be contingent on certain conditions that a buyer may not meet. Um, so I believe the, the bylaw before you hear tonight would allow a much more efficient use of land in Milton, increase the tax base and allow the town to, to grow as a diverse community. Um, frankly, it's hard to see any downside um, to making ADUs more feasible in Milton and beyond. One quibble I have with the proposed language is that owners of detached units, which is me, uh, would need to go to the appeals board to get an ADU permit. Um, this creates more work for everyone involved, but I think could also prevent the sale of houses with detached units that the buyers are interested in, in converting. Um, I also want to say I think the 900 square foot limit is too small. Again, my case, the barn uh, floor is I think 1,100 square feet, and then there's like six or 700 more on the second floor. So we had to classify that second floor as a sort of utility space. Um, and then finally, I'd like to see language that allows someone with a caretaker unit to change to an ADU as of right. I apologize if that's in there and I didn't pick up on it. Um, but this language applies to, to new units, it seems. We already have a, a unit and would like to be able to change the designation. So thank you for your attention, and um, I'm glad to connect with, with any of you about this issue. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for coming out tonight, Mr. Rios, and go be you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I was at WGBH for 14 years, so I feel like we're... Really okay. <laughs> I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Hale Smith, um, before you start, I, I just wanted to do a 23B3 disclosure that I belong to a Milton Neighborhood Coalition, um, and I think Hale Smith may belong to that as well. So pursuant um, to guidance from the State Ethics Commission, I feel that I can um, hear uh, Hale's comments tonight. Good evening, Hale. Well, uh, thank you, Denny, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, my name is Hale Smith. I live at 1632 Canton Avenue and have been a, a, a resident of Milton for 42 years. So I, at this stage, I have a, a fair amount of history. Um, I will try to be uh, pretty brief. I really only have four comments um, on the ADA, ADU proposal. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I believe that there are many good reasons to allow ADU units in the town. Um, so <clears throat> I do support some change, you know, in our current zoning to, uh, to allow more increased uh, use of ADUs. Um, the proposal that's uh, on the website is not so much a zoning change as a change in use. And I think, you know, we haven't really talked about you know, that implication of change in use, but it's significant. You know, when you change from a single family home to a multifamily use, uh, that's changing the character of the property, of potentially the neighborhood. And um, it's, it's uh, not an insignificant change. Um, so I'd, I'd like, just like to stress that this is, in talking about a change of use right now, for what traditionally has been allowed in Milton. Um, I do not support the buy right provision of the ADU proposal um, because there is no control and no governor on the process. And uh, it's, now it's important that 
abutters and neighbors and other interested parties have an opportunity to you know, speak their concerns or support for ADUs uh, that you know, affect their own homes and their own property. <clears throat> and then my final uh, comment is really that this ADU does not address what I consider the most critical issue in the town, and that's affordable housing. Yes, maybe some of these units will become affordable, um, but the economic incentive will be probably have most ADUs move towards market rate versus affordable housing. Um, and if that were to occur, it would actually make the town's affordable housing shortfall worse than it is today. Uh, so really, that's those are my four comments. Uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good evening. Okay, um, Cheryl, I noticed that your hand was next, and then we have um, Priscilla Sloan from the public. I'm happy to go uh, to have Priscilla go first. Oh, thank you. Hello. Hello, Ms. Sloan. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, Priscilla Hayden Sloan, 55 Concord Avenue. Um, and I'm popping in to speak about the fact that if you already live in a densely populated multifamily neighborhood, um, I think that should be considered when we're putting a bylaw forward. It sounds to me so far, most people who are speaking are in neighborhoods where perhaps they have larger yards, bigger driveways, um, better access to properties. Where we live, there are many two and three family homes already, um, some with legal apartments, some with illegal apartments. We have terrible congestion with parking. Although there's supposed to be no overnight parking in Milton, you are welcome to drive down our street any evening and barely get through. We have tooting fire trucks. Um, on a regular basis because they can't make it down our street. So I do believe that a parking provision is necessary. We were also supportive of the bylaw to limit people's ability to pave over their yards for parking because as we experience most of the two families in our neighborhood and three families, which are also currently being converted to condominiums, come with generally four cars per unit. Um, and those would be typically two or three bedroom units ending up with four cars apiece. So when you're thinking about the morning car shuffle, it's pretty intense on our street on a daily basis, people trying to get in and out. And generally, there's a lot of overnight parking all year round. Snow plows can't even plow down our street. So I do think we also have some enforcement issues that currently exist for issues like parking, um, and apartments, whether or not they're legal or not legal. I'm appreciative that this um, bylaw is currently being written for single family dwellings. Um, what we have noticed already is uh, when people are converting a two family, for instance, to condominiums, they are moving the stairways outside of their houses. So the design of most of the two families in our part of town is currently those access points are within the homes. However, as people are dividing up their two families and selling them as condos, we've seen the stairs go to the outside. I'm not sure that that's permitted, but what that does is it puts the stairway right up against their neighbor's property. So our backyards are quite tight. Um, it also puts people going up the back of the houses outside looking over their neighbor's fences or their neighbor's decks. Um, so um, I'm appreciative of all the efforts that the board is putting into this. And I would um, encourage you to continue to put in these great efforts because there are neighborhoods where um, accessory dwellings will become more of a burden than in other neighborhoods. Um, and the idea or the notion in terms of like, an accessory building, it, um, people who have attached garages versus people who have separate garages. We have both of those in our neighborhood. We also have people knocking down garages so they can just pave the whole surface area for more parking. So I think those are um, significant challenges for some of our tighter neighborhoods. And I would like to um, 
encourage the board to be thinking about applying these bylaws across all neighborhoods in town when they would be enacted. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sloan. I, I think that um, Ms. Sloan raises a really good point that I've been wanting to sort of squeeze in here, that every neighborhood is really unique and special and different. And I, I learned this when I was running for state representative years ago, and I did end up walking almost every neighborhood in Milton. And I was astounded at the ver variety of neighborhoods and how, how they each have their own character, but they, like Ms. Sloan just demonstrated, they all have their um, challenges and their issues and you know their goals. And they, the people who live there know their neighborhoods better than anybody else. And um, I, 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 as, as I was listening to different people talk tonight, I was thinking about all the different types of neighborhoods we have. And that I think is why I think about a special permit because each neighborhood is very, very special and um, it gives them a chance to make every accessory dwelling unit, whatever neighborhood it goes into, the opportunity to be the best it can be, um, I mean, within reason. And I think it, the, the things that the ZBA would be going over would be anything legitimate. I'm not talking, you know, I, I don't want neighbors to make it hard um, for um, people to do an accessory dwelling, um, but I think that they may have some real fair concerns or um, suggestions or ideas. Um, and I think it will make it a better idea in the, in the end. Um, but let's see, I think, um, okay, we have one more person from the public, um, Mr. Richard Neely. Good evening. Hey, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Rick Neely, Russell Street, Town Meeting Member Precinct 3. Uh, comments are that, first of all, I appreciate the cap that Kathleen has put into the version dated November 22nd. I think that addresses some of the points I raised earlier about the initial article back a couple of months ago would have impacted all 7,000 plus single family homes. And I think the cap is a step in the right direction. So I appreciate that being added to this revised November 22nd version. At the same time, I also believe that the building commissioner is not the authority by law or by right is not something we should be doing. The language that's in the proposed article talks about having the building commissioner, the responsibility for determining the adequate size and configuration and also determining without, quote, an adverse impact on the neighborhood. I think that's a substantial amount of responsibility on a building commissioner. And you should note that the building commission positions change frequently with building commissioners coming in from other towns frequently. So for those building commissioners that are periodically changing in Milton, to have an understanding as to what is an adequate size and configuration, and for them to determine what is without adverse impact on the neighborhood is a substantial responsibility that I think is better left to the special permit process and for the Board of Appeals. I think the Board of Appeals has three members on every hearing. I think they're the right place to make that decision to determine what the impact is on a neighborhood. I think one of the issues here, and I think Priscilla spoke to it as have other people, and that is the density that is being created in single family or double two family or three family neighborhoods. So I think we need to look at an opportunity for residents to comment on the density that will be added with the addition of ADUs. I do have a comment on the pre-existing. I think that those units that have been already approved by the Special Board of Appeals, uh, you know, by special permit by the Board of Appeals should be get the, you know, amnesty, if you will. They've already been reviewed by the Board of Appeals. I think that section makes sense. I don't think that people who have created the units that are not approved should get amnesty. Uh, who knows what the numbers are, but I don't think that's fair to the neighborhood and I don't think that's fair to the rest of the people that have complied the provisions of the special permit process. So I think on an equity basis, we shouldn't just be grandfathering people that ignored what the rules and conditions were for the town. So basically that's uh, my comments. And I think I do believe that the proposal that Alex is built upon Kathleen's is I think a proposal that should be adopted by the planning board and presented at the town meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Neely. Thank you, Mr. Neely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, 
I noticed that we have Cheryl and Rich with their hands up. I'm not seeing anyone from the public, but the public should feel free to raise their hands. Um, if, um, but did you want to talk, Cheryl? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Kathleen, Does do the neighbors have a right to appeal the decision of the Board of Appeal in this situation like they do in other variant situations? Yes. So when we say that neighbors are getting a say, they're actually getting a veto power if they have a right to appeal. Like what might be the grounds that someone would be able to appeal and win and have one of these overturned? Do you know? I mean, do you have? And how well, would I mean, yeah. Um, well, I mean, the, the current situation we had on the ZBA when I was on there and hearing these temporary apartments was, if there were really, because you have to get a variance as well as a special permit, um, and variances are by law, are not supposed to be by case law, are not supposed to be granted as frequently as they are here in this town. Um, so if there was an objection by a, a neighbor, you probably wouldn't get it. So everybody has to sort of get their neighbors to sign on ahead of time um, because the board doesn't like to issue variances when there's objections. Um, so, but the special permit, I mean, they'd have the same kind of appeal rights that, you know, they would have for any other board of appeals action. Um, a neighbor could object. They have to have standing. So it can't just be, I'm cranky because somebody two blocks away is doing something. It has to actually be, you know, and a butter that actually has standing and, and standing's gotten a lot tighter over the past few years, um, to, you know, to use as a, uh, you know, as an objection. Um, you can't just say, in general, I don't like this kind of thing happening. It has to be a specific harm caused to you particularly um, for you to have standing to complain. But, I mean, yeah, people are going to be able to do that. Okay. Then um, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, you know, I've heard people, um, both board members and um, members of the public, comment about the building commissioner versus the board of appeal in, in terms of looking at the plans and what might be consistent with the neighborhood. And I just have to, uh, to say as an architect who prepares these kinds of plans that the ZBA is composed entirely of attorneys. No offense, Kathleen, but, um, um, but, but you know, <laughs> under our bylaw, it's not supposed to be set up that way. I mean, and, our bylaw you know, says that it's supposed to be made up of different people. <laughs> So in terms of who's more qualified to actually make some of these judgments, uh, <laughs> one could ask whether it's the building commissioner or a group of attorneys. <laughs> and you know, as an architect, I would have my own opinion about that. Um, I, I'm not trying to criticize any member of the ZBA. But I no, just you're totally wanna... entitled to that. <laughs> I, uh, and and I, I do believe they do good work and they, and they do the best um, that they are. Um, presented with, but you know, they are presented with drawings that are provided and prepared by architects and there is some cost and time associated with those preparations. Um, the other thing that I want to say is, um, you know, one of the reasons that we're looking at this is that there, it's been identified back in the master planning going forward, is that there's a lack of diversity in our housing stock. And it's not just the capital A affordable units. It's actually diversity. We have a large number of people who um, are living alone in a single family residence because they don't have other opportunities to go someplace if they want to stay in Milton. Um, and, you know, it's not just um, you know, maybe elders, but it's really sort of a social justice issue. You know, we're, going, we're getting to become a town where you can't buy a, a, a home to live in a dwelling unit for less than $700,000. That really limits who can live here. It limits who can work here. It means people have to drive. Let's say if, if they're uh, people who are employed as one of their first jobs at the schools or the police department or at the hospital. You know, um, we heard some time ago that Bents, uh, they were looking to put in small apartments, very small apartments, because um, they thought that there was a, a need and there was, it was expressed to them actually by uh, Milton Hospital that there was a need to have uh, some of their staff live closer to the facility. So I, I think we have to think about this 
in that lens as well. And it, it's one of the things I, um, I mentioned a little bit when I spoke about the ARP uh, report, but I wanted to highlight it again tonight based on when we're hearing comments about what Milton is and what kind of community Milton is, I think we have to ask ourselves, are we a community that wants to exclude a, a large number of people from having an ability to live here by not looking at where we can modify our zoning to allow for a greater variety in our housing stock? It's a really important question, I think. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have Richard Beeler next. Yes, sorry about that. Um, so I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but I, I held all my questions. <laughs> so okay. I've, got a, I've got a bunch of points or questions. Okay. Um, uh, where am I going to start? So actually first, um, I think it, I think it was Mr. Rios. I, I can't remember the last name. Yes. I, I thought that was a great story. And a lot of it, mostly because like a lot of what we're talking about or what we have been talking about here is in theory or what we believe or what we think or what we think is going to happen. Um, that was a, I, that, that was really great to hear an actually story. Um, I, you know, how it, how it worked out for you. One of the things I, I have a question though, it sounded, and I don't know if Mr. Rios is still on, um, but I guess my question would be, it sounded like you found a way to make it as of right and not have to go through the ZBA. I think that I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. We have an, ex we have an existing um, language in the bylaw that um, Joe Pronax yes. has also pointed out that defines yes. accessory dwelling units, but it has to be a caretaker or, you know, some, uh, you know, your gamekeeper, if you had yes. somebody that was shooting deer or your the gardener or the chauffeur, it has to be staff, you know, that sort of thing. And so that's probably, I don't know who his genius lawyer was, but that was probably the thing that they looked at. Okay, thank you for that. So, so it sounds, but my guess, my real question there is, why go that route? Why have a lawyer spend that time? Why, like this goes back to the question, is the ZBA, the ZBA an easy route to go through? Why not just go to the ZBA and get what you want? Was there like, was that more of a, did, did, did you see that as a more of a problem that you might it's not a actually? Harder, yeah. I mean, it's a harder case to make when you, you can't, the temporary dwelling unit, bylaw is really hard to work with if you are going to be doing construction. Yeah, see, so that, so that's a great example for me because like, and I don't know if my mother's listening right now, but I, I've thought about that in the past, right? Like, wow, we got two houses in Milton. It, you know, we could sell them both and maybe I could live in, you know, and, and build a place for my mother right there. And, and you know, as, as she gets older, I think that would be something awesome. But geez, to think that it's a really hard process to get through sounds pretty awful when it, you know, it sounds like it would be see it would be a great thing. Anyway, so also um, definite point taken. Uh, Miss Sloan had a great comments about those cars. Um, I brought up the car situation purely because I was thinking, and hundred percent right. It really matters in where you're talking about. Every area is different for different reasons, and I was envisioning a house, and I can't remember where it is, but a house got literally enough space for one. You know, I don't think they would qualify for an ADU, but what if they did? Would we really want to force them to make another lot? I think the answer would be no if they didn't need to. However, I would have issue with what I'm hearing about in that area. Like, I guess one of the questions I would have is, so what if there is a two-family or a three-family in Milton? Would they be able to add 800 square feet to the back and put a fourth unit there in this pylon? No, it's a single family dwelling. Okay, good, good, good. So that, and I, I kind of figured that, um, but I wanted to point that out because, because I agree, we wouldn't want to turn three family homes into four family homes and create like crazy parking and on street parking or adding to an existing issue. And so I think that issue would be taken care of. However, I think through this process, if it isn't, we should talk more about it. Um, the other question I, you know, and just to go a comment, because I agree, uh, Cheryl, with your last comment about diversity of housing, because I, I hear a lot 
about affordability because I've heard a bunch of people say that these wouldn't create more affordable housing units. And the only, so the way I look at it is this. So we've got, what, 9, 10, 11, I don't even know how many 40Bs we got in front of us. But if, let's say you've got a 100-unit 40B project. It's not creating 100 affordable units. We may be able to claim 100 affordable units, but it's not creating 100 affordable units. It's, what is it, 25% or something? Yeah. It has to be, yeah, so 25%. So it's not just because you're creating a monstrosity with 100 units doesn't mean the town is now getting truly 100 units uh, of affordable housing. However, if all you care about is being on the list and getting credit for 100, then yay, we did it. But me, I'm not, that's not, I feel like that's not my overall goal. I do think we need to meet that that rule. But the reality is it's, I don't agree with the law <laughs> because if you, you know, it's, it's not real, right? It's not a hundred units. However, I do agree with Cheryl, your comment about, you know, rentals in like, I don't know if this is where you're going, but I would, I'll, I'll stretch what your comment was. Um, you know, if you add a rental unit, even if it's not qualified as an affordable unit, it is drastically cheaper than a seven, eight, nine hundred million two home, you know, mortgage, right? Um, it's also easier to get because maybe you don't have the credit for it. So it is creating a lot of, you know, diverse stock, as you put it. Um, rental units may not be qualified as complete affordable, but they are way more affordable and does add to you know, that housing stock. So I do agree with that. Um, I have a couple, one, well, two more comments. Um, right. Sorry. So the only other thing that, I, so this, and I don't, I know we've talked about this, but one of my biggest, so I'm not, not really going either way here right now, but and I'm kind of in the middle, but one of my things that I just, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting past just for myself, not saying that the rest of the town would agree with me, um, I do think you should go and have a public process if you're really building onto your property, if you're really changing things for your neighborhood. We're, we see that a lot, right? We also see things get through that shouldn't. <laughs> I know most areas in town see that stuff and have it and can point to it. Um, but the matter, the, the thing that worries me is I get, a, I think I get along with all my neighbors. I like all my neighbors. But what if I didn't have a great neighbor? The idea that like, I'm going to say this is probably an outlier, but maybe I'm renting to somebody that's just loud. Maybe they've got some disabilities. Maybe something's going on that makes it out loud. Maybe they don't like the car that they have. It backfires. The fact of the matter is I worry that somebody could call a building inspector and potentially get me to kick them out because they don't like who I have renting. That just bothers me because I don't think while I think neighbors should be good to each other, I think we should all understand how our neighborhood is changing. I don't think we should be telling people who can be living somewhere or what types of rental you could put or no, you can't do a rental because I just don't want to see it. Putting that much restriction on something is just, it's scary to me because I, if again, I, I, side, I look at if I wanted to put my mother, I was about to say basement, but it's redone. <laughs> if I wanted to put my mother... <laughs> In the basement, in my, in, you know, add some, you know, kitchen equipment down there and make it legal. I don't want any neighbor to tell me I can't do it as long as I'm fitting in the, the property of my house and I'm not doing anything wrong. And as long as we've got protections put in place, I don't see it as a problem. However, I am going to make an, my opinion here. I have a, the issue I have though is this seems very split down the middle. There is a lot of people coming to our board saying one way or the other. And while, you know, I agree, Denny, I mean, I think Alex has done a great job here. I think Kathleen has done a great job here. I have, I have a real problem with saying, hey, it's got to be this way or that way. And so what I'm kind of putting back to the board are Kathleen, Denny, Meredith, and Cheryl, like how do we get to an open discussion? How do we get to the next step to really bring neighbors in here and talk about it? Because I think at the end of the day, we, and I don't want to speak for any of you, but I think at the end of the day, we want to make things easier and do what we think is right for the town. And I don't espouse to think that anybody will agree with me at the end of the day, or more people will agree with Kathleen or more will agree with um, Alex. I think if we go to town meeting divisive or split, 
I think all of it fails. It'll all get sent right back to the planning board for more discussion. And then here we are next year discussing the same thing. I, I, I feel like we've got to get do better and we got to get to a better place. There are things in Alex's I don't agree with. There's some things in Kathleen I don't even know. Maybe I don't agree with. Maybe I do. I, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm kind of split in the middle, but I obviously, Kathleen, I think you're, you're adding some changes. There's some fundamental things you don't like of Alex's and I'm fine with that. But if there are things we can button up in some of the things we've talked about, I don't know, maybe we get to a better place. Maybe others will agree and we can all, you know, go united to the, to the town and then the town would be happier. Um, well, know, I'm rambling well, at this point. Yeah. I mean, Rich, I suppose one, you know, we could take a vote now to decide, as I said, there's a fundamental difference between mine and Alex, which is that I do have the, a buy right process for internal units. So if, if, the, if it is the decision of the board that they think it should be special permits all through the back, all the way across the line, no, no, as of right, I'd be willing to adapt mine to my version to incorporate that idea. There's, I said, there's some things in Alex's which I don't see why it has to be a family member to start with, and then he only gets to be somebody else, and you know, some friend of mine later on. Uh, you know, there's some issues that I absolutely do have with Alex's limitations on who these things can be rented to. And going to your point about the right of the neighbor who gets cranky with me because she doesn't like the color of my Christmas lights, calling up the Board of Health, and I'm in trouble all of a sudden. I don't like that either. But so that would be one way to sort of step forward, it seems to me, respectfully to Denny as the chair, is that we could take a vote to say, okay, fine, what do people feel about the as of right? Because that's the major difference between mine and Alex. The rest of it is tinkering around. Um, and so to take that vote and decide, and then if how the vote turns out, I'm willing to take a look at some of Alex's provisions and make the adjustments that Rick Neely has suggested or somebody else has suggested to make it, it's all special permits to protect the temporary ones that are already legally done, to not protect the illegal ones, um, leaving the cap at 10, um, but not having it apply to the temporary ones, but it would apply to the illegal ones. And, you know, making those changes and allowing for special permits for the whole thing. But it, I, I would start with my version with taking in some of Alex's stuff, but not all of it. And then, you know, go, go forward with one that says it's special permit for everything. But that's a decision that the board has to take, a vote that the board has to take. Now, I'm going to decide what we're going to do. Can I just ask a question, um, Denny, since I think, or Tim, whoever has had conversations with the select board, um, just thinking about process. Uh, is that okay, Meredith, if I jump ahead of you about the process yes, that's suggested there? Okay, thanks. Um, Denny, um, or Tim, um, was the select board planning to, or uh, affording us an opportunity to have them reopen the warrant? Um, it, to submit an article, let's say we submit an article, and then through the uh, public hearing process, we want to modify the article, and we get to a, a point that it might be considered out of scope. The modifications might be considered out of scope by town council because they're too significant one way or another from what could have been anticipated. So then we might be limited to how we can amend it. But if we're allowed to, uh, and the select board has done this at times, you know, reopen the warrants, um, then we could submit sort of a, a greater um, modification. And the reason I ask that is because if we submit the more or the less restrictive language, we can most likely um, make it more restrictive later and not have it be out of scope, right? So. You know, if we found that we submit the language as Kathleen drafted it, we have the public hearing, and I would suggest we do outreach like we did with Milton Village, where we did the webinar. We gave a lot of opportunities for people to learn about what the what's proposed before we get, to, you know, to a final language. Um, so that's just procedural to me. So if we were um, 
if we were going to take what I might consider the conservative approach is we would make it as um, lenient as possible with the opportunity to make it more restrictive as we get closer to the final language, as we get oh, further. In, I, in, I appreciate that. that. <laughs> I, I do, I do follow that. I think, I think the other sort of safe thing to do, and I really appreciate Kathleen's willingness to um, make those adjustments um, and, and to work with Alex on that. What I think, because we're down, we're at the wire, um, I think what allows us the most options going forward is if we were to accept Alex's, accept Kathleen's, have both of those available to us at our public hearing for discussion and debate purposes for the public. And, um, and at that point, we would, you know, decide which, you know, which, which way to go. Um, and I think um, I, I, you know, take one of them and, 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 and go in the direction. So in other words, if we're at that point, um, or maybe we let both articles go to town meeting floor and let the citizens decide which, which way they want it. Would they want it to be special permit or would they want it to be as of right? I think it's, um, you know, I, I, I reached out to a dozen people today across the town just to sort of get a sense from them. Um, I think I may have been biased because in the end, they all seemed to agree with me because I was talking about Alex's article. Um, but I think I was pretty excited about Alex's article. And I think um, I, I, for, for me, I, I did get really excited about Alex's article because I could see the ADE working. I could see it passing town meeting. I, I could just kind of really see- It's a higher quantum of vote for, the, for Alex's than it is for mine. So it's a super majority. Two thirds. It's and his is a two thirds. Mine is a majority. Okay. And that, that's in the housing choice bill that Governor Baker signed, um, okay. just to be clear. So there is an effort at the state level to make these easier to do. Eddie, so, go ahead, Rich. Can I make, go ahead, Rich. Can I make a couple, just a couple, couple quick comments? Yeah. I, one of the things I, I forgot to mention earlier, like like one of the, one of my other um, comments about the diverse, like the just rentals and stock. And I mean, the reality is neighborhoods are drastically about to change, right? We've got, we've got what, 10 for, uh, 40 Bs in front of us. The fact of the matter is many are going to happen. And, you know, I live in a neighborhood that's got a very couple, you know, very, some big developments going to happen, right? So the fact of the matter is our neighborhoods are going to change. And we've said this on other boards, like when we're talking, about, like you mentioned, Cheryl, the affordable housing committee, the rea like what I'd like to see is it sprinkled better around town. But the reality is, you probably would have had to started doing that forty years ago <laughs> to like be there today, right? But I don't. But there's no time like the present. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's either start doing that, or you know what, some of the more denser areas of town are going to feel the brunt of it all the time. And so this, this is an opportunity. So I love the fact that we're doing this. I like the fact that we're picking a forward. Um, you know, I, I've, I've commented, like, you, you know what my feelings are on, on some of the as of right, but the reality is I, the reason why I'm not just saying, hey, I think we should do it as of right, um, is in that, Kathleen, when you're commenting about, like, take a vote, I'd prefer not to on that just straight up like that because there are a lot of people coming to our board and commenting the opposite and, and are really- I thought we had to take something to, to sort of- No, no, that's, we do, but that's, I get, let me, yeah, hold on. <laughs> and so my, my the, like, so Mike, all right, I'll rephrase. I don't want to just say, is it Kathleen's or Alex's? I don't, I personally don't find, I don't want to do that because if we just, you know, put yours forward, Kathleen, I worry that we're going to get to town meeting and I would highly expect and if Alex to come forward in town meeting, like he should and advocate for what his position is. And then town meeting is going to probably do what they always do and say, you know, you're throwing a lot at us <laughs> and you need to go back and work this out. And if we adopt Alex's right now and push Kathleen's aside, 
the same thing is going to happen, right? And so that's why I do, I mean, I don't, I, again, I'll throw it back to the committee here. Um, I do like the idea of moving a step forward in some way, shape, or form of both or keeping the doors open to both to talk, you know, to the public. And I highly advise the public to come in and talk to us, give us their opinions, give us their stories. Um, again, not to put you on the spot, Mr. Rios, but I thought your story was great. That was a real story about something that went forward. And if, you know, this ADU, as Kathleen has it, and that we've been working on, it would have really helped you out. It sounds like it will help you out in the future. It's a great, a, a great thing for us to know because it gives us real experience. I also think we as a board, and I don't know if staff, I don't want to put this on you, but maybe you can point us in the right direction. A lot of towns have done this and they've got data. So where can we get some of that data so that we can talk to the town and say, hey, some of your concerns shouldn't be a concern because these five towns have done it and here's what happened. And they're towns like us, right? So that's what we should be looking at. Okay, I think that that would be a healthy, um, you know. Danny, can, can, can I add yeah. some procedural clarity to go back to some Cheryl's questions from earlier? Sure. Um, and then I really so, want to hear from Meredith because her hand has been raised for a good 20 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can I, I can wait, but I, I think it may illuminate some 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 issues um, that maybe Meredith may also want to comment on. Um, okay. We've got an ad running in the Milton Times on Thursday morning. Um, it'll be on on your doorsteps Thursday morning, public hearing on um, on December sixteenth, um, and that's a public hearing for the um, the memory care zoning, and it is a public hearing for ADU zoning. Um, those are two articles, not three articles. Um, so I think, Danny, to your kind of um, wisdom of Solomon type solution, unfortunately. Um, the the, uh, the the mechanics of sort of the notice um, kind of don't don't really allow for that. Um, the other thing to, to to get after, I think, what Charles' question was is my understanding and and the conversations that I've had with the select board is you know they'll be opening up and closing the warrant on Thursday, um, which is why um, you know the planning board and, and you you voted last week to send the memory care article to them, um, which has been done. Um, you'll need to, to vote tonight to send a article um, to the select board for inclusion on the warrant, or, or you can choose not to, in which case we get to the 16th and we just punt that public hearing and that we don't have an article. Um, but my, my, my understanding from my conversations with the select board has been that they will be open to reopening the warrant um, because of the schedule that the planning board has needed to have in terms of finalizing language to a point to get it to a public hearing and then obviously leaving open the possibility that there would be amendments or changes to that language based on the public hearing. Ideally, you'd have the public hearing before the warrant closed officially. Um, that almost never happens. We've all done this a hundred times. Um, I think we're closer than we've ever been in terms of being two weeks late. Um, but I think there is an understanding on the select board's part, um, you know, to sort of, you know, as long as we're not handing them kind of placeholder junk, which has happened in the past, um, which we are absolutely not doing. Um, you know, I think we're handing them two, you know, very much well debated articles um, that they would be willing to reopen the warrant. Um, I, I think they want to make sure they give, you know, the warrant committee as much of a head start on at least looking at these things, um, you know, to, to, to be able to kind of, you know, fit it to their work. So, you know, there is, there's an, ex, if not an expectation, a sort of a possibility of edits happening as a result of deliberation and discussion at the public hearing. Um, so I think, you know, just mechanically speaking, um, I don't know if there's a scope question in terms of, of, of the way Cheryl characterized it. It's not like town meeting where, you know, you've got to be within the scope and you can kind of go like this, you can't go like this. Um, you know, there's an expectation when you're opening up the warrant that, you know, you're, you're putting a new article in and it's more, you know, the need for those articles to be substantially similar is more of a kind of um, civility to use the term that we've been using to the warrant committee and less kind of legal, um, you know, because they would be opening up the warrant so newer our article to be swapped in. So I think to that point, um, you know, it's, it's important, the language that you vote on tonight, but in a way it's not so important because you can, 
we can kind of continue this conversation um, at the public hearing and kind of make, I think to Kathleen's point, you know, if it comes down to, you know, her, her article becomes a special permit as opposed to a by right, I think that's a perfectly, you know, leaving my personal professional opinion aside, I think that's a perfectly acceptable kind of way of doing it. Um, you know, if, if you're concerned about kind of scope issues or, um, you know, ha, you know, are we going to bring one article or two articles or, or, or whatever? So um, all of that is to say, to say that, you know, you've got to figure out one article tonight, um, but in two weeks we can have a, um, you know, we can have a, a deeper kind of conversation um, about, about some of the issues that have come up. All right. I, I just wanted to move on quickly to Meredith and then to Alex. Thank you, Tim. Um, <clears throat> well, Alex might have a better suggestion than what I have, but um, do, do you want to hear from Alex first? Is yeah, you know, why don't we let Alex go first? Because Yeah, I, I mean, I just nice. wanted to express that Alex has, um, you know, a six-page document. I don't know if it's as easy as, uh, you know, just I, the, the one big issue that I don't think that we're ready to quite vote on as a board is the, as of right, versus the special permit. I, I think there's clear division on the board on that. Um, so I, I didn't know if Alex, did you, Alex, did you have any thoughts on? Well, just, just as to Tim's point, uh, we've got the Patriot ledger, so we can re-advertise both articles if they both were sent up. Uh, and do an ad indicating that they were going to be blended. Uh, I think that I think that would do it. Uh, in the Patriot Ledger, I've uh, they've got a they've got a faster timeline than the Times. Um, but I do think that it it would be good if you sent both articles up to the selectmen, and then we would refine them down as Kathleen. Uh, suggest, and I think it's doable. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not, I'm not going to dis discuss the six pages. <laughs> That's nice because we did want to because I have to read a title for railroads and like and you know I got to move on to some other topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, railroads sounds kind of boring, but carry on. Um, okay, Meredith, you get the. I just, I just want to say I I feel like we've really come together. Uh, you know. In, on many big issues on this, um, the limit of the 10 number. And it, it sounds like Kathleen would be open to um, to doing a, by special permit across the board, which I'm, I'm grateful for. Oh, no, for. I said I would do that if you take the vote to do it. I will vote, vote no on it. But oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Else, <laughs> no, but I, I get the sense of it is that most of you think that it should be special permits across the board. And if that's the way the vote turns out to, that we take tonight, I'm perfectly willing to take a look at what Alex had, fix mine to make it all special permits, because that's the direction the board wants mm -hmm. to take. Can I, can I just tell you, I just think- can I, I, I just wanted to finish, can I just finish? Sorry, so what I was gonna suggest is if we did come together on that, that we, we actually could take Alex's, what he had, but there's clearly some things, um, and I think it has to do with, you know, the health inspector, you know, some things on it, that are the family unit, things that you are, that you really have an issue with and that just, you know, the, it should not be limited to, to family members initially. Certain things that I would be willing to, to work with and things that maybe we take off the table and we have those items under discussion and maybe eliminated completely. So if we took Alex's, I would be open to amending some things or removing some of those those items um, that are are of particular concern um, to the other members of the board. Yeah. If, um, and then we could we could work with Alex's. We would he already has the ten units. He has a lot of that language in there. Um, so do I. And so no, I really I would lot, rather. Personally, I would rather not go ahead. Yeah, and I and I don't mean it's not really one or the other because I think so much that we've come to that that you've come together with 
there's similar language in, in both in on many in many paragraphs they're identical language so for the purpose of getting an article together i just thought that might uh, might be simpler so I, I I do recognize that with Alex's article, you would need a super majority, but I think having the full board on board could um, help that um, help help it sail through town meeting. I could be wrong. Um, it's gone back for, for the study before, but I I think that um, I think that um, that's one thing. Um, but if it's a good I article, it should go through. It should go through if it's a good article. I yeah, I agree. But I also, I also, I I am also open to Alex's idea of taking both now, and so we have both options and tailoring them later and having our public hearing two weeks from Thursday and and um, hopefully if we could get Kathleen and Alex, you know, working together. We could, you know, work out the kinks, um, uh, you know, on on one side or the other, and and get one of these that we could all agree to. I, I mean, that's the goal in the end is to get consensus and get one that we all agree to. And if if we can't, then we could leave it to the town meeting to debate it. I think this is. I, I, this has come up many times, and I think I, I think I've heard Cheryl say this before. Let's let the town meeting debate it. So That's what I, I just, was about to say again. <laughs> so thank you for saying it because I really feel as if the five of us eliminating an option is wrong, you know. And I respect everybody here having you know a difference of opinion about this, but it's such a big implication you know right now it's a big implication to go from super majority to majority to go from as of right from we already have special permit process so you know it, that's not the biggest debate you know so the debate that the town meeting should have is should we allow this to be done that doesn't require the special permit in certain circumstances right it's not every circumstance I really feel like I would rather have town meeting to decide that, you know, and if town meeting says we don't like that, it's not much for us to come back later with improvements to the existing, you know, so I personally would rather not eliminate it now. Um, and I feel pretty strongly about that. So are, are you comfortable putting both versions forward? for our public hearing in two weeks from Thursday so that we can also let the public weigh in. I think it's a, yeah, I know. don't mind having the public weigh in, but I, I really uh, want us to have something that we, we can get to town meeting members. So uh, can we submit two different articles on the same topic and one gets voted down first and one gets voted up second? Is there a citizen's petition for one and a planning board one for one? I mean, in terms of the mechanics, you know, I think in the past we've had some things where if you voted one down, then you can vote yes for another. Um, I'm not sure that's the best approach. So if, you know, I guess if you think that we can, I mean, the, the, the problem with going to the public hearing is it might be 10 or 20 or 30 people who weigh in. It's not the 250 or 70 or however many attend town meeting who will be weighing in, who will hopefully be reaching out to the people that they represent, or those people will be reaching out to them. Because the, the problem oftentimes is on something, if you disagree with your neighbor about a topic, you might be less likely to speak up in a public forum. You know, we don't hear from a lot of people in town. And it doesn't mean that they don't have an opinion about something. Maybe they don't have a time to attend one of our meetings. Maybe they don't have um, a complete understanding of what's being discussed. Maybe they need somebody to explain it to them a little bit more. And so um, that's why I'm really uh, a proponent of having it go to town meeting and not just the public hearing in terms of the broader question. Knowing that 
they can come back if there's enough people who don't support it. I, I, we have seen plenty of zoning come back. I'm not worried to have zoning come back. I don't think it shows a failure of the planning board. I don't think it shows a failure if we don't have, you know, a sort of unanimous agreement about a certain thing because we're having respectful debates about the, the implications, right? So town meeting will have that same respectful debate and people will vote. All right, all right. Um, Meredith, I have you and then I have Kathleen. I'm Next. sorry, my hand was just left up. Oh, okay, Kathleen. No, I just was saying that, um, you know, I think, you know, we've we've talked about this and, and I said, I'd like to get the sense tonight, you know, from the board about whether, you know, whether we take out the as of right or not. Um, I, you know, going forward with two articles, I think is, is confusing, um, even more confusing than articles of zoning are to begin with. And so we give them two. I mean, I just think that's just kind of be kind of um, hard for people to figure out. So if we if we said that we were going to go forward, let's say, you know, with, with my version, and that by the time we came to the public hearing, this is kind of a question for Tim. So we have we send the selectman one. We have the public hearing at the result at the at the in the public hearing. In the, between now and the public hearing, I take a look at what Alex has had and sort of, you know, massage mine to incorporate some of the, you know, his stuff. Um, and and then the, you know, at at the public hearing, the vote is that they want to have one that just is for special permit, no as of right, as a result of the public hearing. And then we submit that version, but it's ready because I've already teed it up. So, so here's, here, here's here's how it works. So I've got I, I've, I've got an advertisement running in the newspaper tomorrow that says here are two articles. Um, here's a very brief description of each of them. The full text mm -hmm. is on the town website. So whatever you all decide tonight needs to go up on the town website um, for people who read that notice um, to be able to look at. Um, so for two weeks that sits there and people read it and they get ready for the public hearing and they understand the article and they come to the public hearing and they offer their, their comments to the planning board. Um, I, I actually, um, I, and, and I have, um, uh, so, uh, Katie Conlon is the chair of the select board who is just a, a super duper, uh, public servant, um, I think is, is watching at home. And so I have an email in my inbox. Uh, confirming that um, the select board has agreed to be very flexible with the plan board's articles and allow a replacement article to be submitted in place of an article submitted this week. Um, oh, but it's okay. got to be, but it's got to be done before the end of the month. Um, we can't yeah, kind of yeah. mess around and, and because it is about the warrant committee being able to juggle their duties for the annual with their duties for the special, um, et cetera. So, um, okay. you know, so okay. December Thank 16th, there's, you know, you've you've got whatever whatever you vote on tonight is the base that uh, that you discuss on the 16th. And if you hear something from the public, or if you've done some consideration in the meantime to think about things, you know, it's 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 up to the planning board to figure out what language they actually vote on at the end of that public hearing. So there is an opportunity to make those changes. Um, you'll want to do it in real time so that you know everyone is working from the same base. And everyone at the public hearing is kind of seeing the same changes and understanding the same changes. Um, but but there is an opportunity to to kind of discuss that stuff, you know, take into account, you know, comments that you hear at the public hearing and to make those changes and to come to a mutual agreement. Um, you know, because of what, what you're doing at that public hearing is you're kind of making your recommendation to town meeting um, to say, we think you should vote for this. This is the article that we think you should vote for. Um, that's what it is. Okay. So um, I wanted to get to Rich. I want, okay. I want to thank you. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. no, 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 thank you. Um, sorry, Tim, I feel like I cut you off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think <laughs> no, I it's okay. wasn't, it wasn't you, know, Rich. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rich. That's awesome. I'm sorry, Tim. No, I'm don't sorry. worry about that. I just yeah, noticed no, it's, it's 9 late. 15. And yeah, no, I totally agree. So, so here's my thing. Um, so I, I don't want to vote, but you all can. That'll force me to vote. 
but I don't want to really vote on whether I would like to see the um, as a right or not, because as we've talked about, I was not for the, you know, the all in as a right. We've made changes. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, the as of right is much smaller and it's with, you know, and I, and I, I personally, have spent, we've, we all spent a long time on this. I, I like that piece and I've given like a couple of reasons why, and I've said it over and over again. However, I'm not the only person in this town and I would really like to see it our public, you know, during the public process, I want to hear from folks, right? So folks are coming here and they're giving us their opinions, but you know, we definitely are, and this is good. I'm not I'm not saying it's bad, but we're hearing from the same people. I'm hoping more come in and we hear from different opinions. Um, you know, people that aren't on boards, or you know what I mean? Things like yeah. that. I want to hear from folks in different parts of the town and what their thoughts are, because a lot of what I hear, um, quite honestly, sometimes there's an answer to it, right? I'm worried about this. Well, you shouldn't be because of these things, right? And so I want us to talk through those things. And like, I want to hear what people's worries are. And if their worries are accommodated, well, to me, they're not, they shouldn't be a worry anymore, or we should really explain ourselves so the person isn't worried. And, or we should adopt something if it's largely considered a worry in the town so that we can pass this at town meeting. I mean, the reality is we're only putting this forward to make a process easier, right? And that's it. I mean, the reality is if it goes for another year and now, I mean, I've seen some town, I saw a town put together a committee to, to dive into this and make recommendations to the planning, to the planning board. I mean, you, geez, hindsight, right? 2020, maybe we should have done that. <laughs> There's a, maybe we should have done a lot of things. Um, but I think we all, you all have done a ton of work on this. And I, I don't know. I, I personally think we should move the both forward. I like that idea. I don't want to, say no to one and not the other. I, I mean, for any reasons, I mean, I like that idea. But Rich, I think I heard from Tim that we only can move one forward. Well, we what can do, do the Patriot Ledger ad. We can do the Patriot okay. Ledger ad and we can, we can whittle it down to one at the end of the public hearing or somewhere in that process. Between now and then we could whittle it down to one or soon after we could whittle it down to one. We have a divided board and we promised we were going to end the meeting at nine and it's nobody's fault. This is tough stuff. And we haven't, you know, had enough time on this because we've had so many other projects that we had the ABU on the agenda, something like 12 times before we ever got to it because it was always at the end of the agenda through the summer. And so, I mean, so we have a divided board. That's just where we are. So we have half the board that, likes Alex's version, half the board likes Kathleen's version, and we all want to do. So I just want to move both forward so that we can continue working on this and continue making one or the other version better. Um, so ideally hoping we can get to consensus. And so- Jenny, sorry, can I make one comment? Yes. I, I, I will, so I appreciate what Kathleen said about so it sounded like, so Kathleen, if I'm interpreting what you said right, so, okay, if you all are going to, like, if the majority was the, the stricter route, then she could adopt hers. So I don't know that in the end we're going to have to truly say it's, it's this one or that one. I mean, we've got Kathleen's, and it can be tweaked any way up or down in different directions, right? And so my thing is I personally want to hear from the public more about that fundamental difference. I, I, and I don't see why we, and, and Tim, unless you're saying, I mean, I don't know why we couldn't put. Well, I don't forward. understand why we can't put forward the article in, uh, and it may be that we put it forward and people say that they have lots of concerns still about the article and that they want to get garner further input before it is revised and, you know, sent you know, for final uh, language, you know, and because I do think it's confusing to track to and compare as if, um, you know, when the fundamental differences, I think we understand, you know, some of the fundamental differences. I think the question 
um, if, if we went through like um, Kathleen, when she first did her presentation, she kind of had, here's the article and here's, you know, here's what exists now and here's what this would do. That makes it sort of easier for people to understand than zoning language. So if you're trying to compare these, because then if you ran through like a presentation and you said, okay, do you like this, con do you agree with this concept or, or not agree with this concept, right? And then the language follows, you know? So yeah, the, I, the, yep, the language, the language follows. I just want to keep the options available for the merging later in one direction or the other, depending on where we land. So how do we do um, that? Let's do that. Um, no, Mary, how do we do it? Oh, how I'm do we do that? I'm wondering, can't we submit the language as developed by Kathleen with the understanding that everybody recognizes that there's concerns about that language and that there's language that might, um, that there's comments that might be, revised, can be considered. That might be revised as a result of the public hearing. I think right. we only go with one. And I think what we could say is that Alex has served as comments to what mm -hmm. we have. And those comments will be discussed and explained in great detail at the hearing. But and then, then, then we don't have like, Because then so, Kathleen said she would have no, an opportunity to revise it at that point, right? Yeah, right. But uh, let's let's say let's say two people on the board want more of Alex's revisions, and two people on the board don't. And then there's a there's a swing, and it actually goes in the Alex direction. There's like no, you know, there's then like, then the one that the one that we have gets edited to reflect more of Alex's language. So, you know, all right. so maybe stand there with two separate pieces of paper, we've got an article and we just say, okay, fine. We just, you know, as I said, tweak it either way. All right. So maybe then what makes sense is the, the character the you both said that there's, that there's things that you think that um, there's a lot of what is in what Alex's version is are a result of requiring a special permit, right? They were, right. They're not in Kathleen's because it, this uh, special permit is not required except if it's a detached building. So the question is, if you, Kathleen, if you took that kind of language and you incorporated it into what you've drafted for the detached version, right. Yeah. Then it's there. Then yeah. it's just a question of whether it gets applied to everything or just the detached. Right. Right. You just you just so, take out the you take out the you know the 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 grace for the in you know the internal units and you just apply that special permit. We had all that language in there for special permits for the detached ones. So it's not rocket science to just say, okay, fine, it applies to all of it. And then I personally feel as if we should ask Joe Prondack to comment on enforcement, just like we did on Kathleen's. We have he hasn't provided us any comment on the draft that Alex has provided us, and I think we should have written comment from him on that. Um, you know, as the as I said, as the enforcement officer, you know, he's the one who um, has to enforce these. So I think it's important to get his feedback on that. So. I think, sorry, sorry um, was somebody going to say, want to interrupt no, me? No, I was ahead. saying goodnight to my son. Sorry about that. Oh, I didn't know okay. I was not on mute. <laughs> and, uh, so I, I'm trying to um, get us to a point where we can submit one article with the understanding that there's many things that I, Meredith and Denny, um, to a large extent, and Rich to some extent, have expressed about they prefer in Alex's article, right? Because if you can, if Kathleen can do that, to take a look at that and prepare a new draft that says, you know, it incorporates certain aspects of this and then can circulate that to Tim and then he can circulate it to us. And then if there are other things that, uh, it, but in the meantime, we have to vote to submit language, right? So that's my suggestion. Vote to send the language that we have tonight with the understanding that we know that there's going to be a fair amount of work left to do on it so that we don't have so much confusion in having one or the other. 
I would make a motion to that effect. I, I just wanted to hear from Meredith. I just wanted, and I was also just a process question for Alex, but Meredith, please go ahead. I just was going to say, there's so many significant changes now that we're making to yours, Kathleen, that somebody reading this would look at the amnesty, the pre-existing legal, you know, you know, there's a lot the no, you know. But no, no, I, well, I, I disagree, Meredith, really. That, that's we have special out. language in there already, and we're just, right. so, so we, so we're just. I'm just thinking it's confusing. I, I think it's confusing, and there's so many things like design requirements, which I think we're going to want to add in, and some other uh, things that are, that are really significant that I think Alex has. I just think it can't hurt to put both together. I'm sorry, but I, I would make a motion to propose mine to go forward to the select board with the understanding that at the result of the public hearing, it would be amended, you know, as appropriate, how, how the public hearing turns out. I mean, you don't know when we get to the public hearing that we won't have 100 people saying, oh, no, we really want to have these as of right. So, so I don't, so I think it's better to go forward with my more generous one. Right. And then make it more restrictive as a result of the public hearing. So I have a motion on the floor now to vote to take mine forward to the public hearing. Okay, well, as I mentioned before you made the motion, I just wanted to point out at, before you made Alex. the motion, I said that I was going to ask Alex a process question. So okay. Alex is not a member of the planning board. Well, I know that, but he's uh, he's been on the planning board for 32 years. He's not he's on the planning board area. now. We're, we're having a meeting in the public, and it, we're not in a... I can but ask Alex anything person. I want. He should be asking a okay, process Alex, question. I'm sorry. You, this is not appropriate. Alex, um, I... Sorry, you I don't just, think so, but... No, I don't think it's appropriate. To, to I don't think it. you're appropriate. I'm sorry. Uh, well, okay. Well, now you have to talk about Robert Tool supporter again. I, uh, you may not think I should be able to speak, but I would suggest that somehow my version has to be posted somewhere because if yours is the only version that's posted, Kathleen, no one is going to have any idea what's in mine. And that's why I think sending them both up, posting them both on the, um, website is is the way to go and uh, um, you know your version Kathleen hasn't been voted as the official planning board version yet and maybe not but I it just seems to me that sending them up you 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 don't have a planning board version until after the public hearing when you decide whether or not to recommend what you what you cobbled together from the two pieces. Put the two pieces on the uh, on the website and uh, let's go from there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Whiteside, for your insight from your 32 years of volunteer service to the town. I very much appreciate your guidance. Um, okay. Um, so uh, Kathleen, you, you have a motion. I think Cheryl seconded it. I wanted to open that up to discussion. Um, I yeah. think that Alex makes a really good point. I think for the public process, and we're in a democracy, let's give the public as much information as we can. Let's try to get a sense from them at the public hearing. That's what the public hearing is for. Um, I just, I think that there's, um, I, I, I think that there's enough people on the board that are that are comfortable with that, but I, I do understand and I, 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 it would be my goal that in the end that we would use Kathleen's version, but pro possibly take a lot of Alex's um, language um, that is liked by the public um, and, and that Kathleen could agree with. Um, so I, I, I do understand that you have worked very hard and and I, I really appreciate that, and I want to be sensitive to that. Um, um, but I'm, I'm ready to hear from um, Rich Beeler has his hand up. Yep, thanks. It, so I'll start with this, but I know this isn't the motion. So I, I would, if the motion was to move Alex's, ju just Alex's, I couldn't vote for it because there's a number of things I don't agree with. However, I was on the same page with sending 
you know, in some way, shape, or form, the boat, then, you know, obviously sending. So here's my question. And I get, I think this, <laughs> we don't have legal counsel on the phone. We've got staff on the phone. So I'm, I'm going to ask, I, my question is more for Tim and staff, because Kathleen, you know, your comment, I understand. It, it sounds good, right? Like, let's end one but there's an opportunity to make changes. And so my question specifically is, if we send this one, I mean, the fact of the matter is the board, a board member created, you know, a document listening, you know, getting lots of input from us. So I have a hard time, you know, taking somebody besides, you know what I mean? We're working on, we've been working on Kathleen's for a while. And I don't want to just, I'm not going to kick it aside because she spent a lot of hours on it and invest a lot of time. I mean, she, I mean, that's, I'm always in awe of folks that spend a lot of time on, on certain things uh, like that. And I'm not, I don't want to just kick it aside. Now, I like the idea that Kathleen said, like, if now I've already said I'm for some of the buy right, but Kathleen sounds like she's willing to change it. If, if we agreed to that, right. Even though she doesn't agree with it. So my question, sorry, I'm getting around to it, Tim, is if Kathleen's went forward, can we drastically change it um, in the end? Like, could we then say, you know what, it's now Alex's or some variation. Can it be drastically changed? Because if that's the opinion, if the opinion is yes, I hopefully can you still hear me, my, I, my AirPods died. Um, <clears throat> That means we were long, we've been on for a long time, by the way. Um, if if the answer to that is yes, then I'm not opposed to pushing one forward. The idea that we can we can change it if, if the will of the folks on the committee and make good arguments and we hear from the public wants to drastically change the thing, I'm all for it. I'm willing to do it um, because I want a good article before the town. I'm really not interested in being sent back to the planning board. We spent years on this. Does that make sense? Did I ask that? Well enough to getting tired. Yeah, I think you did, Rich. And um, so my my understanding of of, of how this is going to work is, you know, when 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 you open the warrant, it's it's to, you know, it's to include things on the warrant. It sounds self evident and dopey to say, but um, but it is what it is. And so, you know, we are there's a deadline to put articles on the warrant. That's Thursday. Um, we, uh, the board has agreed that they would send their articles to the select board to go on to the warrant on Thursday. And so that's what we've been talking about. The select board understands that the planning board's process now includes a public hearing and out of respect for what the purpose of the public hearing is, is to hear from the public in a formal way and to have that be meaningful input there is an understanding that the article that comes out of the public hearing may be the exact same article that went onto the warrant on December 2nd, or it may have been edited and changed as a result of the feedback and the deliberations that the planning board does during the public hearing. So, you know, on, on a spectrum of dramatically to not dramatically, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, one way or the other, but there is understanding that, you know, after the outcome of the public hearing on December 16th, that the select board will reopen the warrant and accept a new or a different article from the planning board. So, um, so just to, oh, sorry, ahead. just not, to, sorry, I guess I'm not, I was about to say not to cut you off, but I guess I am. <laughs> I I'll take that as yes, we can, we can drastically change it or we can change it. I'll take out my adjectives, um, you know, after the public meeting, because theoretically the reason why you're having a public process is to possibly make changes after you hear from the public. And so I guess my then question to you would be, um, I feel, I feel for the question or the concern that Danny and Alex are bringing up in the sense that, well, how is somebody going to hear from me? And what part of the process could folks hear from Alex's points that he's trying to make? Can I make a recommendation or a suggestion to that point? Yeah. Um, could Tim post Alex's version with his comments that include his email commentary? Um, at the same place on the town website is the draft language. 
And then uh, if Kathleen prepares a presentation of what's included in the, the draft that she's prepared, we can invite Alex to prepare a presentation um, that addresses his comments. And I'd like to suggest that um, uh, it be done in a sort of compare and contrast uh, way that, you know, um, uh, the, the one that, let's just, let's call it for the time being, the planning board article, you know, allows this. And uh, I, I disagree with that. And therefore I propose language that does this, right? Because I really feel as if it's very hard. I mean, we end up having to vote on language, but it's very hard for the public to understand, you know, like when we're going through line by line and, and changing things. If we can just really kind of get at the issues. I don't think the public is going to, um, I think they'll have to trust us to take certain things into consideration about um, the detail of the language. If we can at least get the public to understand the big concepts and we can categorize them in, in a way that has to do with this is, uh, would be an as of right and what does as of right mean? You know, this would be special permit and what does special permit mean? You know, this would require a family member, this would not. You know, um, this requires design standards. This doesn't. This allows neighbors input. This doesn't. You know, that's the kind of thing people don't know what it, we mean when we say, "Oh, it's a special permit process." Oh, could oh, we make this an amendment? Process. Like, Sorry? could we make? So, I I personally like this because you're doing what Alex just said. How is somebody going to see what I am? Can you post it? So, if, if what you're saying is, "Why don't we post it in the same place?" Why don't? Can we make this a an amendment to your um, motion, like by adding the fact what, like, what she oh, said. Well, Rich, I think, I think um, what Cheryl is suggesting, and she could tell me if I'm wrong, is that we'd be just posting it on the planning board website, both of them. But we I have to take a vote to move forward with something tonight. Right, my, my suggestion is that we move forward with it as what you said, but the amend would be to direct staff to um, to put Alex's version online with the expectation, and I'm not going to repeat what you did, Cheryl. You did a better job than I could do. But to compare and contrast, and et cetera, et cetera, and make those um, and, and build that into our process. I, I I personally like that. I don't want to speak for you, Danny or Meredith. I know you yeah. you, you know, but I, if that finds just, an opportunity to get to a middle there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just want to add one more suggestion, if I may, Danny, just that would to feed off of that. And if Kathleen, I know you've already drafted a presentation, you understand the differences between what yours and what Alex's are. Would you be able to amend your presentation that you provided early in our discussion to include? Yes, I've already added Alex? that as a note. And so we can note. have three columns. One column is existing, one column is Oh, okay. uh, proposed and one column is comment from Alex Whiteside because okay. then you, we can run through it um, and you know you can run through it initially at, at the public hearing and we can invite Alex to, to run through it as well so that we're giving the public as much um, information about the two as possible but we're still voting one on one and then we decide after we hear feedback okay and can I ask so, one other request of Tim that he would also have comments um, from the building um, inspector, building commissioner on Alex's version. Now that you've seen Kathleen, just comments on. Makes on sense. How like yeah, we can, we, we, we can arrange. Okay, thank you. And I just wanted to hear from Alex because I have one question and that is, it's not quite everything that I was hoping for, but I, I mean, I, this is, well, it is a, it is, it gets, it gets both posted and it, it does provide the basis for a, a discussion. And that's what we want to have. Okay. I think. <laughs> I, I, hope, sure we, I hope we want to have a discussion. <laughs> We do. I, I like it. Do. Mm -hmm. I hope we can have a discussion and I hope we can bring both minds together. <laughs> I really do hope we can get to some consensus by the end of this. So, okay. 
Um, Kathleen, would you be willing to work with Alex on getting some some of what we we know we have common language and what we agree on? Uh, yes, I already said I would. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Okay. That'll be more efficient. Thank you for working with Alex. I think that that will help us along here. I think that would be really great. Thank you. I'm feeling like I we're moving forward. I can't promise I'm going to agree with him, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Fine. I could ever ask that completely, but I think if we can find middle ground where there is middle ground or. Well, I, ho I hope you'll agree with me, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I said, I really, as Cheryl did too, is that I think it's up to town meeting to really decide this. But if the board is going to be at the results of the planning here of the public hearing is that at the public hearing, the vote is to have a special permit across the board, I'm willing to work on that. And I'm willing to work on it ahead of time to have it ready. Good. Well, I'm you. willing to work with you. I, I, thank you. I, I will just say though, I mean, there's <laughs> the, the process though, I mean, town meeting could decide, if we decided that was the case, I think I think town meeting could decide, you know what, you, you got it wrong. We really did <laughs> want it, but I think your point, I don't want to rehash this, but I think your point was it's going to be hard to then go do that. So I think this is all going to be talked through and explained at the public process, like the, the, the merits on like how, you know, how do we get there? What does this look like? And you know, what happens? I don't know. It sounds like, I don't want to rehash this. It sounds like we're getting to an ability to, to get on the same page and at least move to the next step. So. Well, and I think okay. it's important to point out where there's differences and then we just have to decide yeah. whether we want to make the choice about that or we want town meeting to be able to make the choice about that. But yeah. I think the first thing to do is to make sure that we all understand. And I, like I said before, I mean, I found it to be successful with Milton Village is not to run through the language first, but to run through what we're trying to achieve, what it does. What are the protections and so forth, right? So I think if we can explain it that way um, for the public hearing, then that would be really beneficial. But I also think it would be really beneficial for town meeting members because I think that we heard, we got good feedback about that process for the Milton Village overlay. And so I just really want to, um, uh, just to reiterate uh, that I think, um, Having the discussion is important, uh, but we might need to broaden that discussion, that's all. Okay. So Kathleen, you had a motion on the floor, but I think it's been adjusted. Um, did so do it? The, the motion on the floor, Kathleen, can you clarify? So the motion on the floor as amended was to vote to, to put forward the version that I had prepared well, on the understanding that at the public hearing, we would um, entertain comments, revisions, um, and hold up the opportunity to revise. And the opportunity to revise it um, to reflect the um, this consensus of the public hearing. And that um, we would request the input from the building commissioner on the enforcement provisions. And that, um, uh, that, I think that's it. Okay. All right. And do you still want to second that, Cheryl? I do. And the, the amendment about the three, you can have those materials that we discussed. Well, that's just a PowerPoint presentation. I don't think that has to be part of the motion. Okay. And All right. Likewise to posting Alex's version on the website. Yeah. I don't think that yeah, has yeah. to be part of the motion either, but that's part okay. of our understanding, right? And I would love to see it in advance. Um, at least we don't want it 48 hours. You know what I mean? We want it like as soon as, as soon as we can. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So all in, we want the materials as soon as we can. I mean, it's two weeks out, but I just don't want to get them 10 minutes before the meeting or the day of the meeting because just want to, you, do you follow Kathleen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We want the public to have ample time to review because it's, you know, Alex has six pages, you have, I don't know, four pages. And um, to, I think to be clear though, we'll have to start with the language of the article that's yeah. been advertised and that's right. posted on the town website. Yeah. So we start with that, but I think what we, we do when we, 
in terms of the backup language, I think, is that what you're talking about, Danny? Yes. What Kathleen said she was going to prepare as sort of a backup language. I think... Uh, but that doesn't come if, out before the public hearing. That we could go between us. That's but, what I mean. It would go amongst yeah. the five of us and staff, but not right. public. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, I yeah, because we don't know. We're not going to anticipate what... The, yeah, you what don't the, know how it's going to turn out. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, but you already said yeah, and you already said it. But to Cheryl, your point, you don't have to vote on it. Yeah, I, I mean, there'd be people but out there with pitchforks, and flames, and stuff like that. And yeah, you just you know, you I'm never sure. know. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're okay. We're so we have a motion. We have a second. Do we all in favor? Uh, Rich Beeler. Yes. Meredith Hall. Yes. Uh, Cheryl to guys. Yes. Kathleen O'Donnell. Yes. Benny Swenson, yes. And I bet Tim's relieved that we... <laughs> that we have... Okay, Tim, thank you for your patience tonight. Thank you, and thank you, everyone, okay. for being on. Okay, well, I will take a motion to adjourn unless anybody has any last-minute business. Uh, the one thing, um, December 20th is when the Warrant Committee said that the Planning Board could come and talk about our articles. Um, that's one of the days. So um, that's that's the Monday after our public hearing. I I penciled it in, and I didn't know if, it, if others would like to pencil it in as well. Okay. The warrant committee meeting on um, December twentieth. Okay, that's. I the only will be. Um, yeah, you'll be friends. Away, I'll no. be away. Oh. Well, nice. Anywhere. That's so I. Yeah, so Excellent. I won't be able to attend, but I, um, I, Kathleen, if you're available in your slide presentation, whatever we come up with for the hearing might be helpful to the, to that board as well. Yes. I assume, Denny, that maybe uh, Ned would participate as well for the memory care article. Sure, we should let him know too. Yeah, um, he might, okay. he might um, like that opportunity. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, entertain, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor, Meredith Hall. Yes. Rich Peeler. Yes. Cheryl Tagayas. Yes. Kathleen O'Donnell. Yes. Denny Swenson. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Uh, off to the railroad. See you Thursday, some of us. Bye, Meredith. We won't see you Thursday. Thank you. We'll see. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good night.